And now, with a tax day reminder that the government is wasting your money, Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the church. Get on the get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Jay Moore back in the studio. Is excited to see our friend Jay. Joe Prano, a very funny stand-up comedian, was out on the road with me doing some stand-up last weekend and is going to come back out again. Is going to be doing the news and hanging out. You can say hi, Joe. Hello there. Joe's also got a podcast. I hope you're sitting down. Dirty Sports is what it's uh, called. It's available wherever you listen to finer podcasts. And Jay Moore's got a new movie out that he's in, Sweet Dreams. And you can watch Sweet Dreams on digital. Starting April 16th, I saw the trailer. Seemed very good. Johnny Knoxville's in this, and Theo Vaughn, and Bobby Lee, and, and of course, Jay Moore. Oh, and Kate Upton. Well, there you go. Good to see you, Jay. Hey, now. Hi, buddy. We got to answer a trivia Hi, question first. Okay. Now, I will, I will set the table that nobody's got the answer to this correctly. That's where I come in. You are a reference machine. You notice everything. And then you make the references, and that's your job. But I will tell you that in this group that I've surveyed about this piece of trivia that has to do with the OJ trial and Judge Ito, that uh, Jimmy Kimmel did not know it, uh, Daniel Kellison from The Man Show, Danny Two Sheets, did not know. These are two guys I look up to in terms yeah. of getting references. We all do. The great Dr. Drew did not get it. The aforementioned Joe Prano did not get it. Joe. Mike August did not get it. And then, <laughs> I, I, you know, that was my reaction. And, that, and Mike doesn't finish the TV Guide crossword, so <laughs> he doesn't get it. I Blank get it. and the, the family. Nobody else in this building got it, and they, everyone was surveyed, young and old. Now, one person did get it, but he's sort of an insider, and that was attorney Mark Garagos. Oh, okay. wow. All right. It's All right. a trial, right? So, yeah, he, he probably knows I more like Mark. about the inner work. Well, he's going to be on the show later, so you can be, say that I'll to his face. Gone, All right. So the trivia question was, Judge Ito had a fascination with a certain thing. Hourglasses. That's wow. why you're you. Oh, wow. He Look, didn't even let you finish the question. That's like the easiest question. How did people not get that right? Uh, Okay, he when, was like a moron. It's all over the place. Like he was the rhyme with the ancient mariner was playing in the background. <laughs> he thought he was a fucking a freaking wizard. When I said it, how? Who doesn't get that? Every Everybody. human being except for you and I. You and I, I will make a back. We will bring out. Oh, he was glasses. like he was like a drunken right. wizard. He was like the wizard you don't want to run into in the forest. That's hey, uh, right. <laughs> with his like nerdy white guy voice and his darker jeans. All right, Mr. Simpson. I must remind he he had one of those voices that just sound like they have bad breath. Yes, like the syllabate s's that fasting breath. It's uh, Mr. Simpson. We're bordering on a hate crime here, Jay. I didn't say anything about him. Mm -hmm. We read it in. And his robes. Here's the point. Uh, when I initially made this proclamation, I had the same look of exacerbation as you have. I was fit to be tied. There's no photo of him without an hourglass. I, the, it, if you go back to his junior high yearbook, he's holding an hourglass in front of his face. You can't even tell it's him. Do you guys know that? <laughs> He almost was on the lacrosse team. It was, it was, it was to fun. block right. out his bad breath. You almost, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you almost had me, you prick. I said, when I first made this proclamation, I, I was just like you. I was like, oh, come on. Everybody knows this, but not the two people that were in the room I, with I me. I assumed you were going to say he had an obsession with uh, uh, hourglasses, and then the question was going to come about that, like where but were they that's, made? Okay, but that's who you are. I talked to everybody else. Nobody knew what the fuck I was talking about. And that's why I've never won Guest of the Year. Help oh, you over well, <sighs> not. The day is young. <sighs> so, Jay, see, so jumped on it. I knew it. I knew look it. Look at that. Look at that. And look at his little baby hands. Yes. Just sticking out. He's got robe. like little league batting gloves at wintertime. <laughs> look at that. Look, Still alive just, and retired. I would, I would pay money. Not a lot, but I would pay money to see him naked. Oh, yeah. Because I have a feeling like all the body hair is like completely symmetrical and perfect. Mm. Well, as I've learned from watching a little bit of Japanese porn, mm. 
the pubes are, are pixelated. <laughs> His whole body is pixelated. pixelated pube. Yeah. No, they, they do grow like the hairs on the head. Yeah. Whereas white guys can have a mullet yeah. up top and a fro <laughs> down below. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do. You do know what I mean. Yeah. So do you really watch Japanese? Joe, definitely. Absolutely. You, yeah. Yeah. They always he's have right. their hands. He's right. The little side part down below. They always have their hands in front of their face. The girls always look like the dog in Duck Hunt. <laughs> Can we can we do this with Japanese porn? Um, could we import a few of our own to go over there and help the ladies out? Like, like chicks from Orange? Yeah. yeah. No, no. Dudes. I'm oh. talking dudes. The chicks, that's going to be self-defeating. I mean, meaning I don't turn on Japanese oh. porn to see chicks from Anaheim. Yeah, you, know you don't want I mean? to go to a car show and see, like, a dart. <laughs> right. You want to see, what, like, a barracuda. What's his name? Sap, the huge guy. Bob Sap? Bob Sap. Another good reference. Bob Sap. Bob, you know who Bob Sap no. is? O for 2. First I thought Edo. you were going to say Warren Sap. Like, no, Bob Sap is the biggest man alive. Was. Still is. Maybe. He's like, if you colored Kimbo Slice outside the lines. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And above. As well, Bob yeah. Sapp, a brawler, was a massive. Look at that! How about I eat your cornbread? Yeah. yeah, Bob Sapp is the biggest black man alive, and Bob Sapp realized that he could go over to Japan and like fight in pride. Yeah, and they'd watch it just because it was a spectacle. It's a six eight guy, three hundred seventy pounds, fighting a two hundred pound Japanese guy. You know, and they they loved. Watching Bob Sap over there Jesus. in Japan, right? Shouldn't there be a porn version of Bob Sap who goes over there and lets these guys know how it's done? Yeah, Do you know I what I'm saying. Or Bob, Bob Sap. Bob Sap himself is a porn version but, of Bob Sap. Like, you know, that's, <laughs> there's nothing not pornographic. About not a guy that like Bob Sap. Bob Sap should be doing it. Is he alive yeah, though? I I don't know, but I'm saying we need to carve a few of the Asian men out of the Asian porn genre and replace them with a Bob Sap Buddy, type. Hey, you're preaching to this. Would you watch that? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I All feel right. like if you know how to search the porn sites right, you can find you're, what you're looking you, for. I, I, let you me, know let what? Me try you're to, right. You're let me right. try to crystallize your thoughts. I mm. feel like what you might be trying to convey is that the Japanese men, they really are the governor on the engine. Yes. Of, of the porn. Japanese porn. Yes, they okay. are. Right. Mm -hmm. They're the restrictor plate yeah. to, to NASCAR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> Bob Sapp is only 50, I guess. He's been fighting in there for, for like... 25 years, I belts. guess. Like, how I mean, would you give that guy a shoulder massage? He just... So, we need that in Japanese porn. That's 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 all I'm saying. Let's take a yeah. couple of the brothers. Let's pack them. You know, they'll, uh, they can check their hogs. You know, because they weigh more than 50 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and they just go over there and clean up that Japanese porn. Because the Japanese dudes aren't built for porn. It's very gynecological, too. They're very, like... And they like to inspect. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's very. Yeah. Very. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got that taken care of. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Uh, so the movie. Yeah. Now I know from playing. Hold on, I read my talking points from the uh, from the publicist. It's really a nuanced look at uh, addiction and recovery. <laughs> yeah. So let's just talk through the eyes of softball. Yes. It's uh, you know it's like breaking. We're gonna we're gonna save the rec center. We're gonna so a, Knoxville is a good softball player. He I used to be on one of his teams and he was alarmingly good. He would show up in like a leather jacket and he, Chuck Taylors with holes in them. Yes, and then he would just hit a home run and make a diving catch in center field. Yes, that's yeah. what he did to me. And then I, <laughs> <laughs> I, but I, no, I mean I. He shows up and he looks like a nerd. Yeah, and then he shows up and tattoos the ball. It yeah. hits it all over the place. And then you say, mm -hmm. and he goes, oh, I was a great high school yeah. uh, baseball player, I think, and then maybe even into college as well. So it makes sense that he would be in a movie like this. I was very happily surprised at what a deep, good actor he was. Mm -hmm. Having been through you know, my bottom and recovery, like he really, he was... I play his sponsor, in the mm -hmm. movie, and I, oh my god, I'm so fat. Oh, I'm so it's fat. Not new in skinny this. J. Oh no, 
It's mm. it, it's me at my head. It's like two hundred thirty eight pounds. It's a, but it works because I'm always wearing the tracksuit and a wife beater and my belly mm-hmm. sticking out as I'm walking mm-hmm. through like an AA meeting. It's hilarious. Yeah. And how did the weight come off with you? Swimming, lifting, eating less, moving more, Manjaro. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we with the Ozempic? What, what's the I'm not feeling? on Ozempic. I I'm would not ne- asking. I would, I would I'm never. Saying, where would, what would you think? <laughs> what would you sign? Would, would you sign off on it? Well, yeah. The side effects are looking and feeling fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I get constipated. Who cares? You're not a fatso anymore if you're constipated. Yeah, but isn't aren't aren't we sending a psychological message that you're not capable of doing this on your own? Well, obviously, I wasn't. Oh wait, were you on Ozempic? Manjaro. Manjaro says. Manjaro's the same? same? Yeah. Oh, it's just the same. Mike in Norco. Oh, that's not that uh, board game that David Allen Greer plays? No, that's it. I shoved it <laughs> up my ass <laughs> <laughs> twice a week. Anyway, gang. Oh, so tell us about Manjaro. It's, it's like Ozempic. It's a you shot. You take a shot. I give a shot, and then um, you just, you're just not as hungry. Every, uh, how often do you do the shot? Once a week. And how long do you have to do that for? I guess it's indefinite, but who cares? You know, here's the thing. I was swimming every day. Every day I was swimming. I was up to like 60 laps a day, every day. I was lifting, I was swimming, I'm doing planks, and the weight just didn't come off. Then I went to my doctor, I got my blood panels done, and then uh, I got this voicemail from my doctor. Hey, it's doctor. Mm, When you come on in, I'd like to talk to you about the results of your uh, blood work. Mm-hmm. And then he, I'm like, oh, God, I have AIDS again. Yeah, again. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Three times? That's got to be right. <laughs> Turns out I was fat. He wanted to talk to me, but he called me obese. Oh, he really? He dropped the O word on me. And mm. I, I, was, I was livid. Like, I wanted to slap him in the face for calling me that, but it would have taken me five minutes to climb off that little table. All right. <laughs> and I was like, I'm ob- I was like Joe Pesci. I'm obese. You stuttering. <laughs> Where did you get your balls big enough to call me obese, you fucking skinny prick? You. <laughs> and uh, he prescribed the thing, the shot. And then I lost about two pounds a week, and I've just been losing, losing, and I've just been holding steady at like 188. What's the sensation? No, there's nothing. You're just not hungry. I'm hungry. I still eat like a savage. It's just He explained to me, it's not strictly cosmetic. You get to a point when you're obese, and I was also pre-diabetic, and I had a fatty liver. Like I really did some damage to my body in a very short amount of time. That you get to a point where your blood chemistry changes, where no matter how much you work out and diet... Your, your, your body's already working a different way, and it's never going to figure it out, especially mm-hmm. when you're in your 50s. Mm-hmm. So I was like, look, I just want to be me again because I was, you know. I it could, worked. I could put my hands in my pockets naked. Yeah. I was a big boy. <laughs> you ever pull a hamstring jacking off and ride it out? <laughs> That's fat, I tell you. You're just sitting there. <laughs> yeah. I was watching this Japanese porn once, and I – so – uh that's you. And now Jay, I mean, Jay's had the ultimate makeover, I think. I mean, sober, weight down, teeth, hair, hair. teeth. Joe's got the head of hair that I wish e- I was just Everything. Joe, Joe's got a <laughs> fine head of hair and a Thank fine you. beard. Yeah, I'm not, I, beard, beard guys are weird to me. Like to walk around like that all the time and not know what your face looks like. That's, I don't know. That's like, I, you got in, I think in, it looks intimacy good. issues? Do, are you afraid to be intimate? Yeah, I have major scars on the side. No, of the you face. don't. Yeah, I just hide it with the beard. It's, no, you don't. It's, you you want to hear? How about these guys that make like beards a cottage industry? Yo, it's like, mean, oh, no, I, you know, my company, Beard Balm or whatever. And yeah, they, yeah. Uh, and they're always on like shipping commercials. They never, they never have enough like swag to just have their own commercial for like their beard products. They always like side door them into yes. a, like a, you know, in like, um, no, no, I know like what you're saying. Shipping.com, like, right. you know, when I first started my beard business. Right. But they never, it's never a standalone right. loan beard grooming, beer bomb, beard butter. Yeah. It's when we got with Smartbox, Smartbox <laughs> let us ship directly <laughs> yeah. through all the states. And, and so they're doing a Smartbox commercial, but it's about their beards. It's like the Harlem Globetrotters on Scooby Doo. It's almost like they're a beard for their beard commercial. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's powerful. It's yeah. fucking, are we stoned right now? <laughs> we, we, Bro, we could get there. All right, beard. so let me, let, me, let me tell you a beard. You got to find the right picture, Dawson or Emmy, but I was watching OJ's uh, Made in America s- series last night just because, you know, OJ's back in the I side, got it, guys. I got it recorded. And... There are some pictures and films of O.J. with a beard, 
And you you don't picture OJ with a beard. You picture him with that jawline and that lip, that the whole definition. But that guy looked fucking awesome in a beard. Yes, he did. He he looked it's Teddy Pendergrass. What are we talking he, about? He he. You can find a if color. You find don't a color. No, me by look at this guy. That, he, that is a color picture. That's a crack pipe at the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> he looked awesome in a fucking beard. And the best beard compliment you can give is G.I. Joe's friend. G.I. Joe had a couple of friends that had beards, and they were just the perfect Mattel, perfect length, perfect thickness. Like, some guys get a little patchy. Mexican guys can't grow the side thing. They just do the sort of the goatee. Other guys, it doesn't turn the chin and go down the neck. O.J., Fucking looks stunning in a beard. That's a handsome man. Yes, and like he, I didn't even look at the fact that his fro is just out of control, terrible. Yes, his <laughs> natural is like whack, but the beard is perfectly so, groomed beard. The beard is afro so tight out of control. that the afro you don't care. Like if I was a black guy, no, no, no. OJ in a beard, not a Fu Manchu. Come on, come on, come on. You're better than that. Mm. <laughs> But that other picture, if I was a black guy, I could see myself. That's how I would want to look. Yeah. Yeah, OJ looked fucking killer in a beard. And when you watch that uh, show. Mine, minus, the, uh, minus the crushing weight of guilt from committing <laughs> double homicide. <you> know? <laughs> well, now it's bringing back all these norm clips. Of these. My, my highest clip I've ever done was my OJ clip about norm. I mean, my norm. What did I say? My norm clip about OJ. Oh, really? It's like off the charts. Like, So I guess every time somebody dies, I'm going to just do Norm talking about that person's <laughs> you death. You did Norm talking about OJ. Yeah, hey, it's Norm McDonald. You know, I, I heard OJ Simpson died, you know. But I, I, haven't, I haven't seen him up here in heaven. I've been looking for him, <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't seen him around, you know. But I'll keep an eye out. Um, hey, Adam, what do, you, what do you call a coffin with OJ Simpson in it? Mm. That's a juice box. Uh, oh, that's good. <laughs> See right there. That's good. That's all I said. I'm just sitting at my kitchen table in a wife beater. Um, hey, so Wang. What we should, you know, what we're gonna do what we should do one day. Oh, I swear to God, OJ I, thought, color. I thought that was a boob. It looks like Lenny Kravitz. Yes. I'm gonna fly. How fucking killer is OJ in a beard? And then you go, man, it's the best looking guy. And everything ran up. That looks like. Full like 440. That looks like 1950s TV makeup beard. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks it looks painted on. Yeah, that's not the first picture is the winner, Adam. You just got to get with the black and he, white. He pretend you're watching Raging Bull. Fucking awesome, and I love that movie. All right, so, um, one of these days, you know, what we should do Jay. Norm, everyone loves Japanese porn. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's favorite Norm clip is when he and I broke down Coward of the County. And other Kenny Rogers songs. Wow. I don't know if you've ever no, experienced I will when I go that. Home. Um, we took Coward of the County and uh, Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town, and we just broke down the game film. And I don't know if no one ever did it before, but when you break down those songs, they sound like sort of, you know, Diddy, country ditties or something. They're they're not. They're oh, horrible. They're there's gang rape in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, a d domestic abuse, spousal abuse, yeah. infidelity. Like he he's going to get a gun and put her in the ground yeah. at some point. He's a he's a Korean War vet whose legs are bent and paralyzed. He marries a young chick. She goes out whoring. Back and to he's Japanese like, porn. <laughs> he's yeah. in his wheelchair begging her yeah. not to go in and fuck strangers. Yeah, it's good, but. Norm and I sort of tag teamed it. It's good. It's good. And uh, I don't know, one of these days, maybe you and I will break it down. Of course, you'll have to be Norm. Well, I'd love to, you know. I like when Norm gets like real tired, you know, and he's just like, he talks to you real serious, you know. Mm. He gets like that sleepy voice. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I figure if I wear athletic clothing, people will think I'm an athlete. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're always wearing a hoodie, Norm. I just figured if I were. You know that, like, deep tire, Norm? Yeah. yeah. Do you have, is there any of uh, Norm and uh, and Ruby? Oh, somebody made a video out of this? Wow, it's a good-looking man. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Can, uh, can three Gatlin. Gatlin twins. No. Had to be three guys that raped her. Can he
Yeah, wow. I said that so licentiously, like he was almost <laughs> like can you play that again. Oh, like, Norm back up, knowing Nando's ass. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gatlin boys come come call it. Hey, it's real licentious. Right. You know? Bad enough when one guy rapes your best gal, <laughs> and when twins rape, but when triplets have at it. I, I, some I interviewed uh, I interviewed Kenny Rogers about why'd you call those three rapists the Gatlin boys? Because He's like, I toured with the Gatlin brothers. <laughs> I go, I know. And there's three of them. He goes, yep. Why'd you do that? You know, why? He goes, oh, I, I remember we were at the Grammys one year, and they were rip shit pissed off, and their mom was mad at me and stuff, that I, I called the three of them gang fit, rapists. Phonetically, it fits, though. The Gatlin brothers. Yeah. yeah. You could have put Miller. You could have. <laughs> you could have put the Miller boys. Uh, you could have put almost, I mean, not Fagenbaum Dooley. or something. Dooley. The, the Dooley, Dooley boys. Oh, right. There were three of them. Yeah. But he didn't. He went with the band he toured with. Hey, go with what yeah. you know. Yeah. I, That's is, I, I'm really kind of taken by how goddamn handsome Kenny Rogers is. Also yeah. a I mean, great we beard. All, I mean, also yeah. a great yeah. beard. Killer beard. Yeah. Like, we all know it, but I didn't know he was like Barry Gibb, like top of the pyramid. <laughs> Like, I'm going to have sex with your wife in front of you, and there's really nothing you can do about it. He was, well, I don't know. Like, they make Keanu Reeves look like he shops at Baby Gap. Like, these guys, they're men. Let's get back to the Ozempic here for a second. Yeah, I'm on Manjaro, not Ozempic. Uh, Manjaro. Um, Killing a sponsorship deal. I would love it. He, Kenny Rogers, how many husky heartthrobs have there been? Because Kenny, Jones, Kenny, Kenny Rogers. Rogers was always husky and always a heartthrob. It's like Josh Brolin. And there's there's just not too many husky heartthrobs. But he, he was one of them. Baldwin. But Baldwin was svelte, and then he sort For of made month. his way. For like a month. <laughs> hey, he did like Hunt for Red October or something. And, and he just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you this. Heavier Alec Baldwin, that's that's what the ladies like. Yeah. I talked to Baldwin once when I was doing Dancing with the Stars. And we just, now we got Husky Kenny. He looks like Harley Race, like from AWA. <laughs> yeah. He's like an old AWA wrestler, man. Look at this guy. What a gangster. I, I'm curious if Barry Gibb was Husky like I don't think so. No, like, if, if we're not gonna, like that. He had the Husky man's beard. All right, so if we're doing a NCAA bracket, handsomest man alive, you pencil him in for the final four, right? I got him bracketed in for the Husky category. No, he transcends. He's a Yukon guy. You, oh, <laughs> thank Adam you. Boy, Come how on. Uh, so you got him. So it's him. Barry Gibb's got to be in there, right? I don't have Barry in the Husky department. Forget the Huskies. We're just talking about men. (laughs) We're going Lady Huskies. I don't have... Okay. I don't have Kenny Rogers in my top ten of good-looking dudes. But if you ask a woman... Mm. Maybe. Of a certain age and of a certain region. If you... Forget, like, the idiot, like, Instagram people. Like, the chicks filming themselves at the gym. Like, actual women. How you and I... No women. Mm-hmm. You ask your gal, I ask my gal. I don't think you can keep that guy out. He's he's like, <laughs> I mean, he's he's like Marquette. He's, what if he catches OJ bearded OJ in a Final Four round? Yeah, I, OJ might be in that. OJ's Elite Eight. <laughs> uh, are, are we in a bearded category? No, or no, we no, just, there's no category. It's just <laughs> handsome as man. Everything's a category for me. Otherwise, I so you got it. You got Paul all Newman, Montgomery Cliff, but they look like fags up against yeah, these guys. Yeah, you're right. Like they look like fucking gays. Yeah, you're right. Well, yeah, no, I, I, I these are men. Yes, but I, I still, I still think that. Kenny doesn't crack the top ten of just the sort of. I think if you poll your people. female audience, look, you were just in Fresno and Bakersfield. What the yeah, fuck well, you talking that's about? true. That's true. All right, I'm going Kenny Rogers, Barry Gibb. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay bearded, has a type. Bearded OJ. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just thinking like Burl Ives, Burt Reynolds. No, no, no. Now you guys are just you're you're, you're <laughs> Josh and guys with beards. Colonel Sanders. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'll, I'll work on this. <laughs> All right. So you got to uh, get Blair Underwood in there. Sunday over here. <laughs> oh yeah, we got to even it out. We're, we're, oh, like fr- f- I mean, but Franco, like these guys look like tools compared to these men. Look, Franco he's got a Harris, gut. No, 
<laughs> Frank <laughs> he's a black, he's a black man with a hell of a beard. Half black, half, half black. He's, he's half Italian. Adam. Now there's Franco's army. Those were Italian guys. Half black Adam. He's yeah. only as black as Barack Obama and Derek Jeter. I know it was funny because when Franco Harris, you got to put Garoppolo <laughs> on that list, maybe. Mm. Janine. <laughs> when, when Franco Harris would show up, they had Franco's army at the stadium, all the Italian guys trying to claim him yeah. as his own. Uh, he's but all the, right, though. But the side of him that went for 141 yards today <laughs> was yeah. definitely the black. Yeah. That's the side that was toting the rock. The Italian side was not that side. Yeah, Italians are known for switching sides, surrendering. Yeah. Yes, yes. When he fumbled, the Italians no longer claimed him. Th that's right. I believe the Italians lost World War II twice. <laughs> yeah. Because they, they switched sides and they got their teeth kicked in twice. All right, so one day oh, we'll recreate these Italians. songs with uh, you as, as Norm. Possibly tired. You Norm. don't think that, I mean, all right, I think Josh Brolin might be in uh, my Elite Eight. James, look, what if your dad was really good looking like James Brolin? Should we eliminate you? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, what'd you do? Oh, you can't help genetics. I know, but how much credit? That's Nepo babyism right there. Well, you don't think Kenny Rogers' dad wasn't good looking? Roy? <laughs> <laughs> Roy and Sheila? I don't know. I I don't know. I've not Roy. seen <laughs> The age might work out. Certainly that was the country quick. theme. That was quick. Thank you. The gunslingers are here, boy. Joe, what are you, a silent partner? <laughs> He's here to observe. Mm. It... <laughs> <laughs> I gave you Colin without words. I know. Um, all right. Who is Kenny Rogers' dad? And Mr. what does he Rogers. look like? <laughs> Mr. Oh, yeah, to you. Fred. There he's back. <laughs> Can I say this? I, I hate saying this. And I, I hate when I say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I was watching Angelina Jolie with her daughter on one of the entertainment shows. Brad Pitt's got to be in there. Who is what now am I doing... What am I doing? Now they're doing a... <laughs> list, they're doing list a of guys he wants to fuck. <laughs> they're doing no, a, I don't want to have sex. I'm not a gay guy. You are. They're wait. doing a production Why, of something. They're doing a production of something on Broadway. Angelina Jolie and her daughter? And Angelina Jolie's daughter, whatever. But Angelina Jolie is one of the best looking human beings ever come down the pike, and then there's Brad Pitt. Their daughter isn't the... They, it, just, it doesn't add up. It's the, early, the, though, right? How old is I, the daughter? I don't know, but the point is, is two tens don't equal 20. Two tens equal like a 13, but, yeah, which I, is good, yeah. but it's not that. I feel like super attractive people, they always show you their pictures when they're a kid, and they look like monsters. Mm. You know that may be. You guys, let me know when right. you're done talking right. about people's kids. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Kenny Rogers' dad was Edward Floyd Rogers. He was a, yeah. Yeah. He was a yeah, carpenter. Rogers. A carpenter. Carpenter. Played the I'm fiddle. I'm just the son of a carpenter, like played, my lord and savior Jesus. Played the Jesus. fiddle. All right. Oh uh, shit! Wow. Wow. Hey, look Interesting. At that that Kenny Rogers' baby there. Kenny no. Rogers' mom was named Lucille. You oh. picked a fine time to leave me, Lucille. <laughs> yeah. All right, but is there a picture of his dad when he's 50? No, that's yeah. it. Uh, that's, that's it. That's, it. that's 30. Back then. All that's right. 30 years old. I like that frame. <laughs> <laughs> the Grapes of Wrath. Yeah, that reminds me. I need a new locket. <laughs> I wore out my own locket. I kept opening it. I was like Tom Hanks on that island. Right. I kept fucking opening Christmas it and closing time. it. For you just Could you give me a locket? Yeah, I will. You think I'm joking. I'm going to get you a nice locket. It's going to be tits. Yeah, I just, I don't want anyone else in it but me. Well, I'm, Two I'm, different yeah. pictures of you. Yeah, just just, just <laughs> me in the, locket. in the locket. Yeah. All right. We'll take a break. You would wear a locket of me and Jeannie. I would. I know you would. You're you're a beauty that way. You get me on the floor of another Lakers game. I'll do, I'll do better in a fucking locket, man. Right, next week. Really? When Denver comes to town, let's go. Oh, it's Who, so good. Let, you got to understand something about you. Who else, rather than you, would we want to hang with at a Lakers? Because you got. You were in the other section because we had too many guests. Mm -hmm. Like you and me and her and my son, like and Sonny, like that's what's up. Like that's he can I, hear he can I, hear us, Kenny. I had uh, <laughs> I had the greatest time at that Lakers game. Was I didn't even tell you about this. I was going to talk about this. I'm sitting next. Oh God! Now I got to find the guy's name. Dawson it was on some rundown list from two months ago. But Mookie Betts. 
I'm sitting next to a six-year-old black man who's all of five eight and a half, and I'm talking to him, and we're just talking because we're just sitting right next to each other. And it turns out he's a Rams coach. He's coaching wideouts for the Rams. Then it turns out he played in the NFL as a wideout for Billy the White Shoes Johnson for the Redskins. Oh. Now he said five eight. Yeah, he was a small guy. You wouldn't believe he played in the NFL. Then it turns out he's from the San Fernando Valley. Then it turns out we were on the same junior college football team for the same year at L.A. Valley College, Monarchs. Then we start going into our coach, Chuck, who was the meanest guy on the planet, and all these other guys that were on the team. Jim Buffo, the middle linebacker. It's oh, yeah. the greatest name ever for a middle linebacker. One guy. That's who you sent you to don't... Japan to do porn. That's right, Jim <laughs> Buffo. You don't remember the name of your teammate who went on to play in the NFL? <laughs> but Jim I, Buffo. I played like a third of a season and quit. And that was the last I ever played. And then we talked about a guy, which is the reason I quit. There was a brother on that team, only known as Squeak. And Squeak <laughs> could bench press. He was a he was like 5'10", 200-pound black guy. He could bench press 450, and he ran like a 4'440". And I remember going, oh, that's it for me. Like so no, you're saying, no more competing. You're saying with, with that half of Franco Harris. That half, the squeak That's, half. Yes, and then he the and I half. got into a long discussion about squeak from 1982. Things that sound racist but aren't. <laughs> That's the squeak right. Half. I just know yeah. when I go home today, I'm I'm pulling up the porn site. I'm squeak fucks barely legal Japanese. Dude. Yes. I don't this, think you should right. say that. With <laughs> is, it, is it Eric Yarber? Eric Yarber. Okay, we got a picture. Wow. All right, Eric Yarber. He looks like he's saying, "Watch out now." Yeah, Eric Yarber. Watch out now. Is five foot eight, and I'm just sitting next he to him. Terrific. And he played in the NFL at five foot eight as a wide receiver, and then he and I uh, proceed to just talk all weird Valley football. Talk and all the coaches we hate and everything. And that's we, the guy who's sitting next to Are we supposed to believe to that the Rams practice right next to a parking lot? No. I don't know where this picture came from. But North Hollywood High. He played He played in the NFL for like three years. He and is, he's the smallest person you've ever he seen. He is small. Look at the ball. Looks like a the ball's fucking ball's way bigger than his head. Next yeah. to his fucking head. All right. I love this. He's like the most likable guy. He's, he's I like, sat right next to him and, his, him and his wife. Yeah. So wonderful. So when are we coming out again? Because this that was the right, greatest next, thing ever. Next week, Denver, when they come to town, when, when we're up, uh, to, when we're when we're tied one apiece, and there Denver comes in. By the way, those Rams sweatpants were nice. Yes. Yeah, so uh, you know, yeah, pull that picture the... back up. You know what makes those sweatpants? You tell me what makes not as packaged, Joe. Mm-hmm. Is the draw the, the yeah. drawstring? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's the f- that's something. The multi fabric drawstring. <laughs> yeah. A, a woven drawstring. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We'll take a quick break. We have got much more to get into. Right after this. Well, here's a simple life hack, an upgrade. Tommy John. With Tommy John, you're so much more comfortable, so you'll do everything better. Second Skin Underwear has dozens of comfort innovations, like a supportive contour pouch and horizontal quick-draw fly, plus breathable, lightweight, moisture-wicking fabric with four times more stretched and competing brands. Over 20 million pairs sold Thousands of five-star reviews. Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. I know I'm one of them. I pack them when I go on my road trips. I wear them every day. I will not wear, especially if you're hiking, exercising, moving around, breaking a sweat. Tommy John. It is simply the best. It's the best pair you'll ever wear. Or it's free. Guarantee. Am I right, Dawson? Get 20% off your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. Save 20% on second skin at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. TommyJohn.com slash Adam. See site for details. Shopify. Well, me and Kimmel, we made a pretty good team. Wonder uh, what happened to that guy. I think he's doing mornings somewhere in Dade County. I gotta check him. Anyway, the perfect duo for growing your business. Well, you and Shopify. The global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. 
Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify's all-in-one e-commerce platform and in-person POS system has you covered. Turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout and sell more with less effort. Thanks to AI-powered Shopify magic. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. So they're big and they know what they're doing. Businesses that grow, well, they grow with Shopify. Right, Dawson? Sign up for a $1 per month trial at shopify.com slash Corolla, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash Corolla. Now, to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in, shopify.com slash Corolla. As we celebrate 14 years of podcasting, here's another memorable moment from the Adam Corolla Show's Ace Awards archives. I'm Al Pacino. You're about to watch The Personal Touch, directed by my twin, Bobby Hollander. (laughs) You are going to get aroused. You are going to get tight pants. Well, you're going to think you're shopping, and you put on pants that were too tight. (laughs) You need to go to the husky section to accommodate all the boner juice flowing through your crank. (laughs) Yeah. Don't believe me? Watch it. Don't say I didn't warn you. You yeah. could mail your semen home to your father. To your father. Yeah. Well, all right. Attica. Let, let's not focus Hoorah. on the family quite as much, Alan. It's we, a family movie, Adam. It's the personal well, touch. If we could just get three. They're co- all having sex together. Now, for some new memorable moments, let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Jay Moore's movie, Sweet Dreams. And you can watch that on digital starting uh, April 16th. So that's upon us. Joe Prano is here. And yeah, Joe, you don't know who Bobby Hollander is. I don't. Um, it's worth a watch. It's, it's, worth, it's worth a replay. It's worth a watch. It's he, if, he, if I have a vote here today, it's worth putting on. I listen, I listen, I've seen it more than anybody else. I am the curator. Of, of Bobby Hollander. Yeah. You're and, the docent. And, and I'm the docent Whoa. of Bobby Hollander, and I can't get enough. This guy was a 70s, 80s porn producer who's talking up his own latest porn film. It looks like film. Lou Reed Transformer. That's right. Hi. You thought it was Alfred, but it's not. My name is Bobby Hollander. And I'd like to well, introduce that was you to Alfred a Hitchcock tape impression. Mm-hmm. Wow. Called the personal touch. Now the personal touch is something different in home entertainment. It's strictly adult, it's strictly X, and it's hot. It's so hot it's gonna blow your balls off. It's gonna wanna make you wet your panties. It's gonna wanna make you reach in and grab it. It's gonna wanna make you come right on your television screen. <laughs> the personal touch means personal touch. It stars Shauna Grant, Sharon Mitchell, Paul Thomas, Ron Jeremy, Anderson. Dominique, newcomer, Bob Sapp, Gene Hollow. The personal touch. Hold on, pause it for a second. If, if I owned a porn company and I was friends with Bob Sapp, I would go, Bob, you got to do me solid. This is going to be the funniest joke ever. And I'd, I'd be like, I'd just say to the chick, like, it's your first day in porn? Good, because I got you with a guy. He's very gentle. He's a soft touch. He knows what women <laughs> and like. And then you blow her balls And off. then I'd just go, and Bob, when I, when I say he's a soft touch, you turn the corner and come walking into the room and drop your towel. Like, just, just to see what, just to see her face. That's a, all. It's amazing that this is the guy that convinced chicks new to Los Angeles to do porn. Like, I know. This is the guy you meet on Lancashire Boulevard at a bus stop. He's like, what are you doing? All right. You know, I got some acting work for you. It'll blow your fucking titties off. Okay. Well, I have a friend whose dad has an unfinished furniture. Don't be business. a bitch. Come with me. Get in the fucking car. I just came down here to be receptive. Get in the fucking car. Look at my cock. Come I on, know. You want to be a fucking star? Because he like, is ugh. doing his, he's doing a cartoon character of a slimy porn. No, producer. you're giving him he's, way too much credit. He no, no, no. I'm not saying he's doing it on purpose. I'm saying he's so much that guy he could be spotted from outer space. So was he like Damone from Fast Time at yes. in high school? Yes, I think that's what like, he who was. Is, who is this guy when he's just home well, alone with his fucking cats? All right, his, ni- his last cats. name isn't Hollander. He's a Jew. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, producer we'll keep, from the we'll Valley? You don't say. <laughs> he's from New York. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. You could hear that. I like these. It's going to want to make you reach in and grab it. It's going to want to make you come around your television screen. Around. The Long. personal touch <laughs> means personal touch. He likes a good brisket. It's not uh, Shannon Grant, Sharon Mitchell, Paul Thomas, Ron Jeremy, Dominique, a newcomer to the screen, Gene Hollow. H O L L O W. Personal touch was shot on videotape oh. to give you the finest quality in adult <laughs> entertainment. That's a great idea. It's going to let ever. you, the home viewing audience, get out of your bed, off your couch, out of the bar, and you guys that are watching it in a bar are going to be into the bathroom. Is this the speech for right, Miracle? I, I, I also like that I don't, his they audience fuck us ten times, has, they make us come nine, but not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> tonight is your night. According to him, the audience is only on a sofa, in a bed, or in a bar. No one leaves their workplace to feed off. You know what I mean? No one stops. Where is this airing? Where, like, where it's is on the actual it? videotape? <laughs> Just it, for prior. Yeah, to it's the, like it plays before. Right? It plays before the movie. Yes. But if you already bought the movie, what's the yeah. advertisement for the? Uh, no one said he was a good businessman. I, I he's off think, prompter. I'll tell you that he's he, off prompter. He's he not could have. Oh no! Prompter. Yeah, yeah. He's just the beats. In the offs, he oh. is putting this. He is putting nice. this on other tapes, trying to encourage uh, you to get. I see. I think to get this. So this is the beard commercial in the shipping commercial. Yes, that's exactly what it is. <sighs> All right, okay. keep playing it because it's great. Oh, you bulls! And you guys that are watching it in a bar, we're going to be into the bar. Pulling your wet maves. <laughs> I don't mean to say it. In an obscene way, but we we wanted to make it that way. Mm. Shauna Grant in this film, who stars, you've seen in Penthouse, you've seen in Swank, High Society, Chic, Hustler, Velvet. You've jerked off to her in Genesis and Gallery. <laughs> she's gorgeous. The book of she's young, yeah, she's right. blonde, and she has a body that'll blow you away. She's going to tell you how you can write to her personally. And get a free, black and white, personally autographed photo of her. She killed herself by sending less than two years address. later after this. It's no hope, it's no joke. With the pen she was signing and with. we know. With a long rifle. <laughs> Ladies. I mean it. Go out, I hope you have new batteries for your Squeeze vibrators. the trigger with a clip. Husbands, <laughs> whip five on yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do it lubricant. You know what would look good on this wall? Me. But this tape is designed <laughs> to make you want it. It's directed to you. We hope you blow your nuts off. <laughs> because it was made that way. And well, before I blast off my mouth and go any further, let me yeah, introduce you. That's enough. Before I we oh, get the comes, picture. Here she comes. Miss Shana Grant. Whoa! Oh, hey now! She's so excited to be there. Mm. Thanks for the intro. Bobby told me that, told you that you can write to me. And I would love it if you wrote to me. Also, Is she married to Bob Fosse with that outfit? That's right. Bobby Fosse. The address I would like you to send your name and address to is Kincaid, K-I-N-C-A-I-D, 18653, Ventura Boulevard, Suite 318, Tarzana, California. And the zip code is 91356. Not only will I send you a black and white photograph, but I would like to hear your comments on the video. Then maybe we can come back and, and see you again. Oh, I'd love to read some Thanks. of those comments. <laughs> Joe. But before we go any further, Sean is going to make sure that you see this film crispy and crunchy. <laughs> Put him in a paddle <laughs> boat. Look at these two. Kick off your shoes. Maybe they should uh, unzip their pants. Ugh. Drop your pantyhose, ladies. Because Sean is going to clean off your TV screen. <laughs> Take off your gonna aprons. Dust it off. So don't dust get up it off for, for a minute. If you have to pee, <laughs> if you have to eat, shut the tape right <laughs> now. Pee. And then put it back on. This, this inspired the skip ad button. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we know a lot of people out there never get to the end. It looks like a Lahayam, but he's actually wearing the Van Halen watching. logo right there. <laughs> on his chain. <laughs> You're going to love it. It's hot. It's a stroker. <laughs> Bob, it's, a, it's abundantly clear. It's a, it's a no more euphemisms for beating off. 
I don't yeah. want to be lewd, but you're going to come on your TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't I mean don't. to be obscene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my syllabus are going to really sell this movie. <laughs> I don't want to be rude, but you're going to come on your tabby. <laughs> and then you're going to use that to mop the brow of your special needs child. <laughs> 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 but I don't want to be rude. <laughs> it's like, you don't? Because it sounds like we're going down that path, Bobby. This, this is not the forum for me to get graphic. <laughs> That's right. Don't Why? come on your TV, though. You're going to be so hard. <laughs> You're going to stop the wheels of your mother's wheelchair. <laughs> That's right. And she's going to fall down the stairs and bump her head. Not really hurt, just embarrassed. She's going over the handlebars of life. <laughs> Silly, but Unless you wedge that hog into her spokes. You <laughs> so... If you're in an AIDS hospice <laughs> or an emergency room or flight control, I mean, up in the maybe tower. Maybe you work in the fucking sewer. Maybe. So if you're in a crowded sports Speaking bar. Speaking of sewers. <laughs> you wanna, here comes Shauna Grant. Oh, God. Look, she's going to be dead in two years, holes. and you're going to wish you came your fucking balls off. It's the ultimate salute. All right. What? I love <laughs> the idea of a guy with premature ejaculation just coming during his yeah, speech. Like this, yeah, like, oh, fuck. This guy's, yeah, he's just warming it up. He's getting a little blood going in there and then just pop to oh, a full screen of Bobby Hollander's giant mug. I can't believe that's mug. a billion-dollar industry with guys like that at the top of the food chain. Well, Shauna Grant, let's see what I can remember. Killed herself, gun-inflicted. That Cut girl. Yes, couple venereal diseases and a pregnancy, I think, from, oh, her last name is Applegate. She was Christina Applegate. You're going to come Shana so hard, Applegate. you're going to lose your baby. That's right. <laughs> uh, You'll blow the baby's balls off. She was from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Ugh, Minnesota, hustle. last name Applegate. About two years after this, killed herself. Some so addictive. do you think she came to L.A. to be like a regular actress? Is that like... I think everyone who's good looking has to flirt with regular acting yeah. before they hang out with Bobby Hollander, right? <laughs> and then it's also, how did you get in? Yes, how was he able to convince you to do all of these things? Drop your pantyhose. <laughs> yeah, as a 19-year-old from Minnesota. Well, right? She's from Minnesota. You got that? Or maybe Dawson? she just yep. was at home and watched one of those speeches and was really she was yeah. inspired. You know she what? Like a saluting new, at the end. Rockney. He, he's the David Goggins of. <laughs> like, that was like Patton. You Dude, know, she was getting got batteries about in two your weeks, vibrator. About two weeks before she killed herself, uh, she was a multiple nominee and a presenter at the eighth annual Adult Film Association Awards, mm. and it was it, the show was held at the Coconut Grove. Ambassador Hotel. Oh, wow. Oh, and, and on Wilshire. Okay. That's where we shot Mafia. Oh, yeah. It was oh, close, yeah. too. Yeah, it was badass. Oh, you shot Mafia there. Jesus Christ. You know what happened with me in that movie? You killed RFK? No, but that's where RFK was killed, yes. obviously. Um, that was a Zucker Brothers thing, yeah. right? I went on an audition for that. And I went down there, and my audition was just for, like, one line. Like a half a line, like I played a waiter, and I had to yell like, uh, <laughs> oh, well, who, "Mama Celeste is in the house" or something, and it sat down. It was a no, it was a nothing, and I went down. It's on Wilshire. It's where Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, and it was in bungalows, like in the back. Yeah. You know, they had their offices set up back there, or something was, like that. It's badass. I That's... forgot you starred in that. Yeah. And then I went there and I sat down, and I waited in line. And I did my one line. And then I went home. And then my agent called me the next day, and they said, well, they liked it, but they want you to come down again and do it again. And I said, no. And they said, why not? And I said, because I already fucking drove down to Wilshire. I sat there, and I just did the one line. It was sort of like yelling out somebody's name as a waiter in an Italian restaurant. And they're like, you're not coming back? And I'm like, no, I'm not coming back. They, they should figure it out the first time, if it was a big role, yeah. you know? And I never came back. So that, that's I what I did happened. that exact thing once on a movie called Blue Streak. Blue mm. Streak? Martin Lawrence Martin and Lawrence. Uh, Luke yes, Wilson. Yes, yes. It'd be me and Martin Lawrence, and I was like, bro, I'm playing Caroline's this weekend. I, I can't just keep flying to L.A. Right. I'm going to make 10 grand. Right. 
And they're like, they just, it's yours to lose. I'm like, that's what they said last time. Right. So you'd like, already auditioned a few times with Martin yep. Lawrence? And they're like, just we just need you one more time. And my manager, Barry Katz, goes, well, if this goes on to make $100 million, right. are you going to have regrets? And I'm like, no. <laughs> That's Barry Katz. And then it went on to make $180 million. Really? And yeah. who was the part? Luke Wilson. Oh. Not Owen. That'd be crazy. Right, Luke. My Owen Wilson starts sounding like Jennifer Coolidge. <laughs> 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 Working on it, man. Man. So, um, sorry, Shauna Grant mm, yeah, killed herself. A couple weeks, couple weeks after the award show, she uh, shot herself with a twenty-two caliber Before. rifle. Make sure she your retu- guns got bullets. Yeah, yeah. She killed She's herself. Gonna blow your load. Leave the cannoli. <laughs> You're gonna leave your brains she all retired. over the TV, <laughs> uh, all around it. Oh. Shauna, this rifle will blow your fucking brains <laughs> off. She did thirty films. In four days. Yeah, but no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, had sex with 20, 37 men on screen. Not and, Bob Sapp. And Not then Bob she Sapp. retired after she got herpes <laughs> mm-hmm. and had an abortion. She's mm. way to bring everybody down. And then she I did all herself. that before I started. That's right. <laughs> Why take the bloom off the rose, Dawson? Yeah. And she was what age? From Minnesota in real 17 life. 17 years young. Is <laughs> Here she comes, Shawna uh, Grant. That's my favorite. <laughs> Johnny Grant. Old time Johnny Grant. Here she Shana comes, Grant. the star. She was 21. Oh, oh that's so horrible. So, so, so all that in a three-year window. I mean, she had But good... did she come here from, she's from Minnesota, right? All that in a five-year window. <laughs> yes. She's a buried three. in Minnesota, in Farmington, Minnesota. She does she come here to be a porn star? She's amazingly good looking, right? She could audition for, you know, Aquanet. Aquanet chewing gum commercials and toothpaste commercials. Does she have to do this? Sometimes you fall in with the wrong crowd, you know? There yeah. Rough crowd. When she arrived in Los Angeles, hey! Whoa. she unsuccessfully pursued several employment leads. Who mm-hmm. wouldn't hire her? She's a beauty. Yeah, she saw an ad for the World Modeling Agency. Oh, that's, oh. Right. that's what happened. <laughs> Located <laughs> in Van Nuys. Van Nuys. Van Nuys. Yeah. Balboa Park. Sought recruits for, quote, figure modeling. Oh, that's what She visited what the happened. agency's owner, Jim South, who set up a photo session with Fake legendary name. softcore photographer J. Stephen Hicks. Mm. Her first pictorial theme featured a mock camping set and was published by Club magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just fascinating like that that leap to like, okay, I'm I'm doing some risque bikini underwear photos, <laughs> and then the photographer goes, now just like pull that to the side and spread your lips. Yeah. So, and you're just like, oh, okay. Yeah, he's a renowned softcore photographer. You got to listen like to this. Ansel Adams <laughs> yeah, of <not>. Shape Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a reputation, Jay. You know, I'm laughing at shaved. <laughs> I know, I had to put shaved in there. Wow. Yeah, one of the uh, people working with her said. <laughs> Two funniest words, I think. In shaved and pussy. Shaved pussy. I so agree. Funny. It's so awful. Uh, regarding her, uh, someone said, quote, I deal with a lot of girls who are new in the business, a lot of young girls, and a lot of girls from out of town. Colleen was so incredibly young and naive, she was completely unhip and not L.A. Mm. Wow. Well, they changed that. She wouldn't be, uh, I mean, she's only, be, you know, 60 years old today or something, right? I mean, wasn't, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, she's going to be missed. Bobby Hollander will be missed, too. Is her ghost on Instagram? Or? <laughs> he went uh, at about age 68, I think, oh, as I recall. Oh, too soon. <laughs> yeah, too soon. And a lot more porn left in him, you know. And his, oh. and his fans had more semen left in him, and he didn't ring it all out. That was his greatest regret. It's not getting every fucking ounce of sperm out of every human every being at the in the bar valley. Because he right. promised. He promised. He promised. <laughs> That's right. He's whipping five on God right now. That's what it says on his <laughs> tombstone. <laughs> oh, he died at 72. All right, I made it a little later. He got into some trouble. He was uh, on some sort of work camp release thing for a while. He had ran, probably ran afoul of the IRS or something. Yeah, there had to be a couple of RICO acts that he violated. 
Was he the Burt Reynolds inspiration for Boogie Nights? You, you know, I don't... Same kind of hair. I, I don't know if Paul Thomas Anderson watched that or knew about it, but he grew up in the Valley the same time I grew up in the Valley. Paul Anderson did. And the porn was a Valley thing, and you knew chicks who went from high school like into porn. That was the greatest day ever when we found out <laughs> that... Uh, you, Chris, somebody was a Christy you Canyon in physics was, in, was in porn. I mean, it was like yeah. I came home from my construction job, and it's like you know, Christy Canyon. Like, well, that's her porn name. It was um, Missy. So Missy, I was like, oh yeah, she's fucking hottest chick in this valley. It's like, she's in a porn film. I'm like sitting there going, what? And it's like it's called on Golden Blonde. <laughs> I go. I go <laughs> Well, where, Deep literary. Reference. I go where, where, where is it? It's like that's it, down. It's somebody said it's down on that one in on Lancashire, you know, down on whatever. It was like that movie, Mad, Mad, Mad World, where, where nine guys running downstairs, like jumping over each other, diving into cars, <laughs> knocking guys off of mopeds, and commandeering them, like all just going nuts. <laughs> Like, it was mad, mad, mad world. You and Ray in a plane? Yeah, yeah. me and Buddy, Epps, uh, me and Buddy Hackett and a, Ray in a plane. What? Like, uh, I can't. Where's the depth finder? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, she's in a porn movie. We've been admiring her for years since, like, junior, Beautiful woman. junior high. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, went, I, I asked her out on a date, and she stood me up. Mm, I'll talk to her. But I got her back. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I did. All, oh, yeah. all yeah. around the TV, uh, we found on Golden Blonde. Oh, we have a video of Bobby Hollander on probation for cocaine pr- possession. Oh, oh, my God. I knew this was out there somewhere That's around the corner. Debbie's in there getting makeup on now. Bobby Hollander is on probation for cocaine possession. Each weekend, he must clean up highways for the California Transportation Department. I've been here 16 or 17 days working with this crew. Some of the finest guys in the, in the, uh, yeah. in the highway and freeway business. It's just only the 101, there's no question. Oh, that's not. Some Bobby's moving some mulch. I love that he's got the exact same attitude. We're going to pick up soda cans, <laughs> candy yeah. wrappers. Somebody up old sandwiches. All over the highway. We're gonna pick up so much trash it'll blow your fucking balls <laughs> off. <laughs> Look at this fucking winner. Holy shit! He's got the Polly Walnuts hair sticking out the sides. He's the exact opposite of that crying Indian who was by the side. <laughs> like if we could find the '80s version of the crying Indian. Like in the seventies, it's you know Chief Squano. He's got the single tear. Somebody <laughs> threw fast food out the window. Now we got Bobby Hollander cleaning are you, it up. Uh, are you like I'm really amazed when I see somebody litter today. Yeah, like if I see somebody like just drop a wrapper on the ground, I'm yes. I I don't like go and confront them about it, but I'm truly taken aback. It's like seeing someone kick a dog. Yeah. It's, it's sort yeah, of yeah, like, yeah. It's what? Like, Whoa, wait. But that I would actually yell. You know what I'm seeing a lot of? I'm, And I notice a lot of, and someone explained this to me, and I was saddened by it. I started coming across, because I walk a lot, so coming across a lot of water, bo- water bottle containers filled with piss, just chucked, Yeah, right? So... I see water bottle like by the side of the road. Yeah, there's one on the back so, road. They're so just wasteful. Like, and I'm like, who is throwing? Who is that? Who is this person? And then why? Why now? Like it didn't exist when I was a kid. People take a piss on the side, but of the they road. wouldn't. They wouldn't fill a bottle and then chuck the full bottle out on the side. And it says Dasani on it, but it's fucking bright orange, you know. And it's like uh, somebody. And yeah, then, it's always it's always bright. Whoever it is yes, is always dehydrated. Tons, of, tons yeah. of vitamin B in their system. Oh, no vitamin, just dehydration. They're like they're gonna have no. Stones. You take you take a multivite. You, no, you'll that turn I it. know, but I don't think the person pissing in a bottle. I just think. Well, no, up you night. know who they are. Who's that? Somebody figured it out. There's delivery guys roaming every neighborhood mm. every second of the day. We did not see when we were growing up. There was no packages, yeah, Amazon, delivery, yeah. Amazon, every UPS, everyone. There's a Grubhub, and there's, there's all these guys driving these vans. There's no fucking piss in the van. 
in L.A., you can't use a bathroom at a gas station. You can't go into the Home Depot and go, like, I had to drop a deuce, you know. There's no <laughs> no one will let you use your bathroom in L.A. These guys are out where's for your, nine hours. Excuse me, where's your lumber? <laughs> yeah, nowhere to take a piss, right? So they piss in the bottle, yeah. and then they're not in their neighborhood. They're in your neighborhood dropping the shit off, and then they throw the fucking bottle of piss out the window. This is all clearly laid out in Malcolm X's speeches about black economics. That's right. How you make, <laughs> yep. you know, that's that's why you were living in a bad neighborhood. That's what happens. You get uh, pissed in the bottle. So if you're wondering, by the way, because I'm a, I'm a, I, formerly I used to be a very chronic in my car in a bottle pier. Uh, if you're wondering how many times you can pee in a venti Starbucks cup, oh yeah, before the bottom gives out, mm. four. Four. <laughs> Four. That's your Four. Limit. Did Mr. Owl tell you that? Or no, is that something that happened. you figured out? I was on my way. You're going to love this. I was on my way to my second mediation for child support. Mm -hmm. And uh, I offered double. Uh, this first marriage. I offered double. It was declined. Mm -hmm. So now I got to go to mediation. Right. And I, and I was like, oh, my. This is like the worst. I'm running late, of course. And I, I peed in the Starbucks cup, and the bottom gave out. And I walked in with like they're they're already gonna like bend me over a table and take me. Right. And I walk in with fucking pee pee pants. Oh wow! I walked in just <laughs> covered in piss. <laughs> It's a good hey, negotiation tactic, though. He's yeah. not really doing that well. He's oh, pissing his own pants. Yeah, tell me where you guys come down on this. I it just reminded me. Um, God, who? Shit. Anyway, I did a drop-in at the Ice House uh, uh, last Saturday, the Saturday before last Saturday. And um, I was done, and I went off stage. You know the Ice House, more, more in the family for you. Mm -hmm. And I was walking back toward where the bathroom is down the sort of side hall. And, Joe, you've probably been there since yeah. it's been remodeled. And there's a guy with cerebral palsy, and he was in the electric wheelchair. And his hands are all crumpled up, and he's got the thing, and his, you know, he's got all the stuff. But he's telling me he's a fan, and he, you know, he wants to come on the show, and, and so on and so forth. And he has a water bottle in his lap, but he's sort of trying to hang on to it with these cerebral palsy hands. Yeah. And at some point, he knocks it over directly on top of his crotch. So he's wearing these beige pants. He's leaned back in this electric wheelchair, and there's just this huge gathering of water right oh. in his crotch. And then I go, oh, your, your bottle. And he's like, oh. So, and he kind of collects it. He gets it righted again. But he's now the cerebral palsy guy who just pissed himself, right? Yeah. There's, no, there's no fixing that, right? There's no – and I'm, like, trying to – come up with solutions like i'm gonna tear the sleeve off my shirt and pat it yeah. you know down or cover it or take a kerchief and like lay it down or something he's not bothered by it uh, i'm trying to explain to him that everyone's going to think you you're the guy who just pissed himself yeah. back <laughs> back here and there's no way around that you're not going to talk anyone out of this either with this affliction and he didn't seem to care what do i do what's my move I mean, I ended up just, leaving. Just start, I just left. Just start dabbing at it with your I just, hands. <laughs> just dab at it. Just start rubbing his crotch. I'm like, what's my move? This guy doesn't care, but I'm, I'm insisting on helping him. Well, that's him. Ace. He lives yeah. in the solution, and yeah. the solution increases. You yes. and I live in the problem, the problem increases. Yeah, so uh, oh, we have the Indian by the side of the highway. Just a, just a, a sharp contrast to Bobby Hollander and his, uh, his work by the side of the side Speaking of the cerebral freeway. palsy as we pull up Chief J. Strongo over here. <laughs> He's, That's uh, Jules. <clears throat> That's the Passaic River in uh, New Jersey. He's <laughs> kayaking. The Willowbrook Mall is just out of frame. <laughs> but he finds oh. trash. He finds trash. See, in that the water. would make me nuts. He's not oh, happy about industrial it. age. Oh, no. He's a man without a country. Here he comes, friends. Can't stand the Red pollution. Man. Yes. Here he comes. This Watch out. <laughs> It's like a Steelers Redskins opening. Yeah, it really, it really is. <laughs> the Steelers versus the Redskins. The Mahongahela River. That's right. For the natural beauty that was once this country. That's a fucking Italian guy. <laughs> I know. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, oh, right here in the fancy socks. Yeah, suede stains. Yeah, he's crying. He's upset. We all remember that commercial. And then it turned into Bobby Hollander doing what he's doing by the side of the freeway. So I had a guide, speaking of cerebral palsy, I had a guide. I mean, for my son's birthday, we went to Disneyland with a guide. Oh, that guide. 
Which that is that guide? You will. There's Let Joe's poor. Let me explain the guide. <laughs> yeah. Five fifty an hour. Thereabouts. M- minimum five hours. Jeez. But when you go on Space Mountain, <laughs> you just <laughs> a, you walk. Th- just you just you go from the street to your seat on Space Mountain, and then when yeah. Space Mountain ends, you do like this. He's like the guy walking to the ring with the boxers. Yeah, everybody out of the way. Yeah, he's yeah. He's your hype. Yeah, and he, and you just circle back, but you circle. It's it's um, it's the best money you could ever spend. <laughs> but but flying private has nothing on a guide. No, but what about this experience? Because this happened to me. I've done the fucking guide thing more than once. But you pass people like your friend with pee pee pants. Yes, all the little people. And they're just uh, we're going <laughs> we're going to Space Mountain for my son's thirteenth birthday. Me, Greg Baldwin, my son, his friend, and we're literally going on for like the fifth time. And these people in wheelchairs like haven't moved. That's right. And oh, you jump the wheelchair people even. You no, jump everyone. Yeah, like, uh, no, and it's the all, it's the flex, like you flying private, like courtside, like nothing compares, Joe, to this luxury of just walking in, and just going again and again. And you're walking past speakers that go, it is currently a two hour wait from this spot to get right. on space. And you're just like, sorry, about, sorry about your little legs. I used to be on television. <laughs> you might, you got, you know, you got spittle all over your lips. You might want to wipe that. Well, I'll tell you the problem. Oh, you look at his tip little that hands. Guy after the day, too, huh? You got to tip him after the day. Yeah, it's worth it. The tip. Oh, okay. The fucking tip. I what mean, do you care? You sell because booze. You got someone who's making. <laughs> you got a 19 year old, and they're making Mark Garagas's hourly rate walking your ass around this thing and then you got to tip them out and i don't know what the tip is based on because i just paid you twenty seven hundred dollars like disney yeah i i get it but disney should break off a chunk <laughs> yeah. is what is what i'm yeah. saying i mean do, do when you you pay the guy twenty eight hundred bucks are you tipping at twenty percent like what are we what are we talking about but well, here's where it all went south for me yeah i did this i'm a poor person I mean, I have the soul of a poor yeah, person. Yeah, you definitely you know do. what I mean? Yeah. And we did You are this. the wealthiest poor person. I right. Know. First, my first question was, when this was presented to me, I said, I don't feel comfortable walking in front of everybody to the front of the line and just cutting in front of everyone. That feels weird to me. And I, then it was then explained to me, oh, no, no, this is 10 years ago. You got your own entrance around, the, you know, the side. Like, no, you're not going to just walk past all the little people and go to the front. And I go, okay, if we got our own, like, side thing, that that's fine. I just don't want to walk in front of everyone. And as soon as we got there, it's like, out of the way, knaves. Out of the way, surfs. Like, everyone just, and I'm like, they, all we're doing is walking in front of everybody. Yeah, that's what we're doing. I, I'm like, <laughs> so I guess people just lied to me because I went, like, I'm, oh. I'm, I don't want to do this. I feel weird of, about it. But then here's the real problem. The real problem is my kids are, you know, seven at the time or whatever. Oh, speaking of beards, there's a picture of me with a beard. I got a full on beard, Joe. You're gonna fucking be jealous. This is this is when this. you're on the guide. It's, it's one of those tour? going going down the toboggan. Oh, you know, okay. got the beard on. Kids are eight years old or whatever. But at a certain point, after three hours, it's like we're hungry. I go. Uh, well, we're still on the clock here, people. Well, we're gonna go eat. Go, what do you mean we're gonna we're, we're gonna punch out? No, no, we're on the. Yeah, we're eating, and you got to wait in line to eat. My ex-wife is saying to the chicks, she's "Getting five fifty now. You want a hot dog? A churro? I'm like, well, hold on, who's paying? <laughs> you, I'll take a water. Hold on, the water seven dollars. Why, why am I buying you water? You're getting five hundred fifty-seven dollars an hour here, <laughs> and I'm like, and so people take like one bite out of a corn dog, and I'm like, okay, here we go, Pirates of the Caribbean. Everyone's like, relax, we're eating here, and I'm like, okay, but if we take forty minutes and eat. That's four hundred dollars. Who cares? To sit here. You ever see a U-Haul buying a hearse? Crank it up. Oh yeah. Oh, I, that's good. You ever seen a, a U-Haul, U-Haul buying a hearse? Buying a hearse. Never seen true. that, have you? No, you're right. You're right. But the guy is right. The guide has. Did you guys stop and eat? Yeah. Didn't bother you? No. What do I care? <laughs> Five fifty an hour to sit and watch it's people ridiculous. eat your food. And oh. here's the thing: the guide oh. has zero 
swag in the food lines. Mm. I waited in line for ice cream for 45 Hayes minutes. He should go oh, to the fucking front of that. Line. Nope. It's like, no, you have no power here. He should go. The, that's the line he needs the butt cuts for. <laughs> but, oh, it's a picture of me and... Uh, Picture. I think I got a full. I think. Oh, I, wow. I think. I, I think I got an OJ. That's OJ's beard. Wapo. I got a fucking OJ That's OJ's type beard. Type beard. Hold on. Let me take going on over there. Let me there. take Montgomery Cliff out of my top. Yeah. My final put four the Ace in the Man ice. in there with the whiskers. What was our porn guy's name? Bobby Hollander. Oh yeah. yeah. I like him as the guy pitching you on the guide. You're gonna skip the VIPs. Uh, You're gonna uh, skip uh, the cripples. You're gonna you walk past everybody. Everybody with their little baby hands. The log floon is gonna be squished. Sh- <laughs> are gonna blow your balls off. You can't skip food though, unfortunately. <laughs> How about the collared Whip five shirt? on that churro? What'd you guys go in December? A collared shirt, sweater. It and, was cold. And Carhartt vest. It was cold. And a knit hat. It was cold, Jay. And I had my rally beard on. All right, we'll take a break. We got the news. Joe's gonna be doing the news. Right. We'll do that right after this. Let me tell you about my friends at Chime. Springs in bloom. Are your finances in bloom? Take small steps to make things better. Chime, Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. Start building credit with everyday purchases and regular on-time payments. No annual fees, interests, or credit check to apply. Use it everywhere visas are accepted. No monthly minimum balance. No impact on your credit score to apply. Get paid up to two days early with direct deposit and overdraft up to 200 bucks without fees with spot me when you set up a qualifying direct deposit access 60,000 plus fee free ATMs more than the top three national banks combined pay friends through chime, whether they're a member or not and cash out your money fee free. It is chime, right? Dawson. With Chime Secure Credit Card, you can start improving your credit scores right away. Get started today at Chime.com slash Adam. That's Chime.com slash Adam. Chime feels like progress. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by the Bancorp Bank, N.A. or Stride Bank, N.A. Members FDIC. Spot me eligible requirements and overdraft limits apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal and OTC advance fees may apply. Terms and conditions apply. Go to Chime.com slash disclosures for details. I am not excited for the end of my night, I gotta say. I am going home uh, to a girl that I'm seeing who I just talked to on the phone a few minutes ago and she was crying and I asked her what's wrong and she said, I feel fat. I was like, oh no, why did this happen? I was like, you're not fat, why are you even saying this? She was like, I was just on Instagram and there's a girl on there and she's got a six pack and now I feel fat. I'm like, that's something that only women do, right? They see somebody slightly better than them and it ruins their whole day. Like, I'm six foot four. I'm pretty tall by most people's standards. I don't go to NBA games and come home like, I feel short. Like, I feel so short. I thought I was tall and then I got there and they were all seven feet and this is just gross. I feel disgusting. Tomorrow I get back on vegetables and I get back on stretching, right? I'm gonna drink a lot of milk. I'm growing. Monday, I start growing again. Joe Prano is on the Adam Carolla Show. (laughs) Jay Moore, Joe Prano in studio. Uh, Jay's got a movie, Sweet Dreams, and then Joe's got a podcast, Dirty Sports, and Joe's got some news as well. First one here, Ontario resident who wants both a vagina and a penis wins public funding for unique surgery. This is Ontario, Canada. That's right. It's Ontario, (laughs) California. That guy wants three penises, but no vagines, right? (laughs) Well, who doesn't want that, right? I'm saying if you're from Ontario, California, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't can't conquer the Inland Empire with a penis. Ontario, a bunch of white guys in Japanese cars acting Puerto Rican. Yes, that's Ontario. But this is Canada. Yeah, all right. So he gets a vagina and a penis. That's right. And then at some point, someone's like, you're pregnant. And he's like, yeah, I tripped down some stairs. <laughs> I have mommy parts and daddy That's parts. That's right. Jesus Christ. So it's a well, dude pu- who wants a vagina. For it, the too. public's going to pay for Denying it. Denying the procedure would infringe on the person's charter protected right to security of the person. But I don't get why the public has to pay for all this stuff. My <laughs> yeah. feeling is like, if you want to do it, do it. 
I tell everyone in California, we're about five years behind Canada. So if this is what you're looking for, this is your fucking future. If this is where you want to go, keep going. Because well, that's where we're going. It sounds like, Joe, in the story that they granted this because it was a creative, the most creative surgery. Is that what, what you said? Uh, the unanimous decision by a three-member panel of judges uh, could expand access to a novel, quote, bottom surgery for people who identify as non-binary, me- uh, meaning neither so th- fully male nor fully female. They so, have a penis, and they're going to add a vagina? That's correct. All right. Has a penis seeking a vagina. Well, <laughs> then he can go fuck himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little on the Jesus nose, but yeah. Christ. You want to talk about, like, if you meet a dude or a female at a bar and you're bringing them home and you know you have to have like certain discussions yeah you know before you go to their apartment like yeah. are you allergic to cats <laughs> i got a cat you know what i mean there's a herpes discussion but both parts you you got to delve into that before the fucking skirt comes off right but before <laughs> the panties well, as bobby hollander would say before yeah. the pantyhose drops you're going to have to have that discussion with your partner, your potential new partner, Men, right? grab your lube. Women, grab your vaginas. If you right. have both, I guess, grab both. Grab both. <laughs> grab a tire iron. <laughs> so when is science going to make the parts actually look attractive? Because it always looks yeah. like they've been in a car accident and went through a windshield. <laughs> I... I think, I, you know, I was talking about that with Dr. <laughs> I Drew. I don't want to be insensitive. I'm not talking about Dr. Drew. But I I have, and, by, and by the way, I have zero point of reference. I'm just imagining. No, it's, it's it a, looks like a thumb. It's like a, I hit it with a hammer. I agree with you. It's a two-way street because, you know, they when they were talking about Harvey Weinstein, they were going, his, his penis was disgusting. It was like sewed on to his side leg. And whenever they're talking about Michael Jackson or whoever, they're describing their dicks as oh, there's something wrong with it, or it was bent, or it had a dog leg in it or something. But never, ever, no one ever goes, that chick snatch looked like a sea urchin with an M80 in it, all right? It had a beak. <laughs> yeah. Like, they never fucking do that. Why don't we talk shit about their snatch? It, it, looked, like a, it looked like somebody took a BB gun to an origami swan. That's right. <laughs> Man. All right, so he's got both parts. Uh, you're right, we've not worked it out yet. I think we're kind of... <sighs> we're sort of where boob jobs were in the 50s. And are you like me? Like, like when you find out somebody was gender reassigned, my first thought is, well, let me let me see. Yeah. Like just curiosity. Yes, like, I'm exactly me, like you, Jay. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, let me see it. Okay. Oh, they gave you a cock? Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Is it a good looking cock? Like, what did, what did they do for you? Do you think that too? I'm, also, I mean, I don't the way, say it. The way they construct it. Like, we take oh, the urethra like, and we, we take the clitoris and we get a fishing knife and we. You know, and they it's Can you imagine like, a penis as sensitive as a clitoris. And oh we, my we god, you just come constantly. And they take they graft skin from the calf and then they sew it on and like they, I wasn't burned. They, yeah, yeah. It's it's it sounds somebody throw grits in my lap. Yeah. Anyway, Canada, good luck. Because uh, it's on. Yeah. And tax. If you had funded. to move anywhere in the United States, like people flee LA to move mm-hmm. Austin and Nashville seem to be the two places, but I gotta be near the ocean. Oh, yeah. That's right. Hey. I, I feel San exactly Diego right. seems like up your uh, grouchy alley. Yeah, grouchy alley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Shauna> Grant <Nickman. laughs> After. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because the ocean is tough. Because it's so there. And it, 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 I it, could, it, you're part Tampa. of it. I could do Tampa, West mm-hmm. Palm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of nice Floridian oceans there. But you can't go anywhere. You're set. Yeah. You're good. Um, sorry, what else? Uh, Nike is being slammed for their skimpy Team USA women's track and field uniforms for the Olympics. Uh, They've always been skimpy. Yeah. These, yeah. Ones, these ones have a bikini-like bottom. My hoo-ha is going to be out. Oh, they're doing a Yours? bikini. That, by the way, that's, that's the a, most that's I've ever seen them wear because there's a it covers the belly. Mm. Usually it's just uh, yeah, there's you got, nothing You just there. had the, the sport... Sports bra and the That bottom. looks like bathing suits from the 1920s. Like, this is awful. <laughs> With the zipper oh, up that was the greatest. Come to Atlantic City. There was a great Norm, there was a great okay. norm joke in uh, the first season of Family Guy. And when Norm was death for the first season, and then somehow I took over for death on, on um, Family Guy. But Norm 
God, I think you can find it. Norm went to go visit Peter Griffin as death. And and in episode first season, I think it was the first season, and he showed up, and Peter like opened the door and saw death standing there and went like, "Oh my god!" and like, just took off and running, <laughs> just took off running. And Norm said, uh, "I caught Flojo. You don't think I could catch you?" <laughs> and it was good. such a Norm. We can find it. We'll try it. Let's see what that sounds like. These are uh, not, I mean, I don't want to speak ill of Nike. The company has been accused of sexism since unveiling the kit at oh, that's, Nike Air Venom Thursday. I think that's like covering up. Well, Flojo did wear the two-piece, right? Yeah. I guess they're saying Half the that the- ass is the, always the, hanging out the back. It was like, uh, to be fair- It's like more of a boy short They ran thing. in like period panties. Yeah. Like yeah. those are the yeah. period panties yeah. and then a crop top. We'll just pull right. up a picture of Flo Joe since we're bossing the uh, graphics folks around. Yeah, all right. Flo Joe. But see, uh, see if I have any heater on here. I don't know. It, it, there's Let's no the such thing as line. coming out with anything anymore where you're not accused of something. Right. Right? I mean, that's kind of, yeah, that's that's kind of where we are. That's way less. Yeah, I agree. And this is in the 80s. That sure is. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Look at that athlete. Yeah. She's the best. Look at the abs. Yeah. Oh, full head of fucking hair. And that, uh, and that OJ beard, oh, it's beautiful. Hero. Literally died at 41 or something. Mm. Just like had a heart attack and died. Uh, 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 why bother getting in shape if this is your fate? <laughs> yeah. you, you know what I mean? I mean, you I mean think that's was, a steroid-related uh, death? I, I, or don't, a, I don't think oh, so. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I mean, you can find out. You can find the family guy, and you can also find out when she died. She died in her 40s. She just died. Oh, here oh, you go. I got the clip. Now Good job, guys. Good job. Hey, uh, Death, you, you got a file on me? Yeah, somewhere. It's in the car, I think. As it mentioned, and I ran two weeks of junior varsity track. Uh, let's not do this. Hey, look, I caught Flo, Joe. You don't think I can catch you? <laughs> ah, my ankle! Ah! <laughs> yeah, listen, don't help or anything. I'm totally fine. Damn Irish. I got a B plus in health. Is there anything I can do? Yeah, why don't you boil some water and rip up some sheets there, Einstein? It's a sprained ankle. I just have to stay off it for a few days. Wait, wait, wait. You can't stay here. Why not? You're trying to kill me. Besides, how are we supposed to explain you to Mr. Roper? Hey, uh, <laughs> make yourself at home, Death. I'm, uh, I'm going out for a little while. Hey, wait, wait. You can't tell anyone I'm here. For if humanity discovers I'm no longer lurking in the shadows, the consequences will be dire. I love Norm as the voice of uh, the pigeon on Mike Tyson Mysteries. Oh, yeah. It's brilliant. I do love a big labia. Flo Jo <laughs> died in 98. She was 38 years old. Wow. Oh, wow. In her 30s. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And Pour one what out. shape she Pour was one in. out for the homies that aren't here. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. What else? We Just got died here? in her sleep. Uh, Netflix. Yeah. Oh, is, that's good. Netflix is shifting away from big budget <laughs> oh. action flicks and big name stars. Mm. Tired of seeing the same action movie on Netflix over and over. Netflix knows and they're working on it. High octane action films backed by big name casts have dominated Netflix. Uh, the company's new film chief now wants to change that. It might have something to do with Mark Wahlberg. In 2020, Netflix, Netflix paid him a whopping thirty million to star in Spencer Confidential, which clocks at 24th of the highest, the 24th highest paid film role of all time. Critics pan the action thriller. Hmm. Hey, uh, Netflix, here's a solution. How about I do a one-man show about having an intervention, going to rehab and getting sober, and I'll, hey, I'll do it for $3 million. Yeah. Save Mighty some money. money. Yeah. I'll Mighty save you guys $27 million. <laughs> that could be the, the title of it could be Mighty White of Me. Yeah. With Jay Moore. Don't, I don't need any help getting canceled, Ace. When are you going to do your next special? Uh, I just, I just kind of don't care. Yeah. I just kind of bob around in life. I'm like a bobber on a lake, just kind of floating there. I just go with the flow. I do gigs. I go out every other weekend, mm -hmm. do a movie. Like you and I talked about this on the set of Dumbbells, I think. It's like, we like to work hard. You said something that stuck with me forever. I like to work really hard once in a while. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm like, the guy's a genius. I think I was talking about sex. That's, well, that also. It's like, the guy's a genius. It's, it's like, and then you, we were talking about this, me and you. It's like, that's why stand-up's perfect. It's like, okay, I'm going to just watch TV all day, take a nap or two. Maybe I'll take a steam. I'll order some food. Then I'm going to work really hard for an hour. Right. Then I'm going to go back to my hotel room, and then I'm going to have a week off. Then I'm going to do a bit part in a movie over here. You know what? I'm going to write a book and go all in on this book. And then I'm done, and then I got three months off. Yeah. Then a neighbor goes, hey, when am I going to see you in a movie? Then I yell at my agent. Then I get in a movie. Right. It's like, it's the best life. No, you I... You get there, Joe. Hang in there. I agree. I it's agree. It's the best life. But well, you, you had to be a civilian for a while, and you had to know what work was, and you had to kind of come from work. Well, you know work. Like, I mean, I was a waiter, and then I just started doing stand-up. But, I mean, I was getting paid, paid, nineteen twenty. Wow. Like, my first... I made a million at 20. Really? Yeah. Shauna Grant made one seven when she was 20, but... Well, she's a lot ta more talented than me. Dead at 21. Wow. A million? Yeah. How? Well, I, How I went out happen? every single weekend. Every then single you, weekend made a million dollars in that year doing stand-up. I mean, I never... And I was doing a lot of colleges, mm -hmm. you know, so it just adds up. And then you... Then it's like... Yeah, then you do like a pilot for like fifty. Yeah, yeah. Then you know holding deal. Yeah, yeah. I never had a holding deal. Oh, you never had a holding I deal. I never They're wanted the best. I never, you know, I can't. I gotta be able. I'm like a beagle sniffing the ground. I gotta go check <laughs> out the next yard. Yeah, well, holding deals like someone just gives you three hundred grand and goes, "Don't do anything for yeah, a while." I can't. And you go, "All right." It's you a, know, it's I my dream. That. That's all when I, I met him too. When I met with Michael Eisner for the ABC for the Kimmel. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is a lot of money. And then they got to the part where I have two weeks off. Right. And it it's work. It, I just, I can't. I, I can't agree. know that I have to be, like, when I watch The Office, I actually get a low-grade angst mm -hmm. watching people go to The Office and seeing the same eight people all the time. I haven't seen you in three months. That's why we're always happy to see each other. Yeah. When are we seeing each other again on the floor of the Lakers? Uh, again? Buddy, I got you. you don't, got don't, don't be. I need dates. I could be out of town. I'm trying to figure. It's not this my out. problem. I know, but it'll be. Go NBA.com. Look up the schedule. <laughs> we got to right. go through the Pelicans first. All right, get through the Pelicans. So you know that you were saying work hard for short periods of time. That's actually like a very LeBron James end of his career yeah. strategy. He's like he kind of like waits around. He's very calm. He's very you know he doesn't and then he bursts for a few minutes and takes over the game. So the, the most elite athlete in the world is on your the work great, hard regimen. The great Sugar Ray Leonard beat Marvin Hagler <laughs> basically because he said, corner, tell me when there's 30 seconds left in this round. Yeah. He just bopped around Brrr. for two and a half minutes, and then last 30, pop, 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 wins the round, goes back to the corner. That's how I wrestled. That's how you wrestled. That's how I wrestled. I'd be on the bottom. I'd stall. I'd get called for a stalling warning. And then I'd just do two sit-outs and do a fat guy roll and just good night. Pow. Yeah. All right. What else we and got? And yeah, that is kind of like sex, right? Yeah. Fat like, guy mm, roll. Tap you go on top. I'm relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> Critics are calling out the plastics injury in industry over fraud of plastic recycling. Whoa! No! I know. Finally, someone's talking about it. Only about 5 to 6% of plastics are actually recycled, according to the Department of Energy. The rest ends up in landfills or is burned. <laughs> Nothing ever works out. I mean, it's all, all – every idea is, is a good idea with a bad result. Just all these commercials you see and all the things. You see all these commercials, the water bottle, and then turned into a wind chime, you know, a dream catcher for your young child. It's, it's, it's always shit. It always ends up on some beach in some war-torn place with some people walking around scavenging yeah. and burned. It's just all – It's every, 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 everything reading, we do is to make us feel good about what yeah. we're doing. I'm that's reading that's this all book, we do. I'm reading this book right now, Material World, the six, mm -hmm. the six elements that change civilization. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. sand, oil, copper, lithium, uh, and other stuff. Oh, it's not the, not the Madonna biography? No. 
Okay. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> very nice. It took me a second. Uh, Jay, Jay did a little deer and a fart light there for. He did a half a. I got beat picked of, off at first. He got me. <laughs> he got, the pickoff. You no, know, he was caught leaning. Andy he, he got over leaning, here. and he was thinking about trying for second because yeah. he got Always picked. Always thinking yeah. about second. Yeah. If I'm on first, I'm going. Thinking about second. second. Oh, I'm not thinking about it. I'm going. Sorry for the Madonna joke. And. Uh, and it's like people go like, oh, you know, we're going to get off like uh, fossil fuels and then we're going to have renewable energy. It's like, yeah, but to dig for, you know, the lithium to make the batteries for the wind turbines, you have to move a, an aircraft carrier literally of Earth to get a one chip for like one phone. Right. So it's we're doomed either way. We're going to run out of water in 100 years. So everybody just relax. Right. But it's all, for us, it's just sort of feel-good shit. I mean, nothing yeah. ever works. I'm recycling. Yes, I'm recycling. Yeah. I want to know how they pick the, the 5 to 6%. Like, is it a specific 5 to 6%? They're like, oh, we'll just do the cans. It's definitely not the bottles filled with piss right. by the side of <laughs> yeah. my fucking street. That's, <laughs> nice. That ain't it. By the way, that's a horrible uh, margin of error, 5 to 6%. It's yeah. Like, well, just say 5.5%. Yeah. You'll, we'll have it. <laughs> Government phonies. Yeah, nothing works. It's all sad. I'm writing myself in on the next presidential ballot. We're, we're back to OJ. The uh, executor named in OJ Simpson's will says he'll do everything to ensure the Goldman family gets zero from oh, the estate. It just never stops. That's awesome. OJ <laughs> fucking, these motherfuckers. She was fuckers. 18 when he, when he met her, and he just... I'd love to. He just <laughs> met her at a club, you know, like an exclusive club where she yeah. was cocktailing yeah. at 18. And he just said, oh, who's that? And then went, all right, that's 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 OJ, mine. OJ would like to see you. And then uh, she had the world's worst roommate because I was just watching this last night. <laughs> um, she went on a first date with OJ at 18. Now, he was still married and had kids mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But he, right. He just went on a date. Her roommate. It was like, did you see that beard? <laughs> came home <laughs> and said her pants were torn. And said, like, what happened to you on this first date? And he's like, well, he was pretty aggressive, but don't worry about it. Literally tore through denim it, on the first date, according to the roommate. And then OJ put her up with a car and an apartment and sort of put her over there. And then I guess they got married after that. But uh, tore the jeans, tore the jeans on the first date. Is but the now, executor named? Uh, let's see here. I mean, that's, it's like uh, these motherfuckers. Filed by Cassidy Law Offices. Mm -hmm. Simpsons longtime lawyer Malcolm Laverne. Is a uh, Shamil. <laughs> uh, she... But this is this is the uh, he says he'll do everything to make sure the Goldman family gets zero. So there's also the you know Nicole and her terrible decisions. This guy was just returning glasses. Oh God! I mean, yeah, it's too bad. The only picture that exists of him is a picture looking like he was trying to fuck her. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's got the eighties or nineties like bandana and the two earrings yeah. and you go, oh, and then someone goes, Oh, he was returning her glasses and you go, Rah. Right. right. <laughs> He's trying to find it. I'm not saying OJ's right, but he is was right about it. you know, because you did all they have is the bad nineties modeling picture of him looking like a Lothario who's trying to fuck a hot blonde by like like some like the middle-aged fat guy named Lou was like, I'll return the glasses. No, and he no. was like, oh, no, 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 oh, I got God, it. Lou. And then he goes by the bathroom. He's gargling with Lavoris, you know, and slapping on the high karate. He's like, All right, Ace, I got the, this. I got it. At the same it. time, me and Ace go, no, no, no. Nah, right, right, I was right. there. Lou, come on. Lou, come on. I'll take this. Nah, I'll Lou. run him up. I'll run him by the house. Yeah, I'm in my uh, I'm in my forerunner. I'll just, I'll just run. Yeah, I'm, I'm going up that way anyway. I got my new forerunner. Yeah. With my vanity plate that say Gator. <laughs> and nobody had, I mean, nobody, nobody <laughs> knows if there was any, right. there, but there wasn't anything between them. It's just, there's only pictures of him looking like that guy. Cato recognized him from auditions and was like, fuck this guy. Yeah. Take him out, OJ. He was a black belt, I understand, right? Ron Goldman? 
Oh, there was some story about him having some skill that don't get that jujitsu training. Don't forget. Bring, don't bring karate to a knife fight. I saw some right. comic Ron. I forget his last name, but he saw some clip on Instagram. He goes, "Yeah, I took karate. They, what they don't, I got jumped. And what they don't tell you is karate only works if you're against another karate motherfucker." Oh <laughs> right. Oh yeah, we are acting it out. Like, oh, there's a. If you just two guys in stances. Oh, you kind of. All right, now Dawson, you got to find Black Belt Adam. Because there's a whole movie, basically the Foot Fist Way, yeah, was a movie that was made essentially after like a three minute man show bit I did called uh, Black Belt Animal. Though I can't prove it, but um, we <laughs> did. I'll show you Black Belt. But there's a there's a quick scene in it where we sort of go over this. I see that picture. I this, just think achy breaky heart. Oh uh, yeah, that's yeah, American. Yeah. Look good, Ace. <laughs> My name? Sensei Adam. I am going to teach you the art of karate. Rear front kick. Left, right, cabbage patch, evil death claw. Yeah. Let me give you a real world scenario. Let's say you're in the milk line at school and bully comes up behind you once you change let's say you're at the beach with your best girl and a guy comes up and kicks sand in your face let's say you're at a bar tilting a couple of cold ones after work with your buddy and some drunken townie thinks you've been making eyes at his bitch <laughs> what are you gonna do all right now you'll see the display of exactly what you're talking about You're at a cockfight, and a couple of the Tijuana locals think you've been winning just a little too much. <laughs> Let's say you're on the street and a bad guy pulls this is what a knife I'm talking on you. <laughs> but he, but he, uh, but he holds it more forward. <laughs> and now he does that thing where uh, where he taunts you by throwing it back and forth from one hand to the other. But a little smaller, a little, a little smaller, but faster. <laughs> Huzzah! 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 Ow! Oh! Ooh. Oh! Ooh. You were at a strip club, and one of the Bettys just told the bouncer you gave her the magic thumb. <laughs> <laughs> this All right, is for my we got it. Hey! Yeah, I don't know. It remind me of that sand that in the face. Has that ever actually happened? The kicking the sand. It's like yeah. a go-to bully literary reference, but I don't know if it's ever like I don't know. If, first of all, I don't think it's bullies like hang a, at the beach. It's a Joe Weeder thing. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, Charles you, Atlas. Yeah, Charles Atlas. Like you, you take your scrawny ass to the beach, and then the big buff guy kicks sand. Yeah, bullies don't just roam around looking for guys to kick. Like who's? I've never and then seen also, sand. They didn't give. They didn't give women a lot of credit back then. Because then you're just sitting on a towel with your girlfriend of four years, and this guy kicks sand in your face, and she's like, I gotta go suck his cock now. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry. Oh, you didn't have a you good let defense. That happen. You didn't have a good defense against sand. Yeah, no I'm one like, really has a good defense. Bruce Lee couldn't stop sand. I'm laying here you with my know? eyes closed. How yeah, do I stop well, sand in my face? You can't stop sand. Yeah. Yeah, they kick sand on you. I sent away for the Charles Atlas stuff. It was in the ads were in Pro Wrestling Illustrated magazine. Oh, really? And it was just isometrics. There's, it's nothing. It, it's they, nothing. They you send get, you what nothing. What do you get in the mail? It's a, it's a little booklet. Like when you go to Vegas and they leave in your room the booklet of like coupons. Mm -hmm. It was like that. Uh -huh. But each page was like, all right, for your biceps, put your elbow in the palm of your hand and push for 20 seconds. This is for my bicep. Oh, it's like you're in prison. Or like just push... Push here. Isometric. Yeah. It was all isometrics. Wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, but hey, we need to take a check it out, break. Huh? It worked. <laughs> <laughs> that and the Kilimanjaro. The um, Garrick was supposed to call in, but he's not around. But that's fine. We got more news stuff we can do. I all can't right. believe that's so, fucking OJ news. That well, makes me sad. Right, why don't we take a quick break? We'll come back, finish up the news right after this. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts, O'Reilly Auto Parts. They're in the business of keeping your car on the road. 
They offer friendly, helpful service and the parts, knowledge, and everything else you need to maintain and repair your vehicle. They've got thousands of parts and accessories in stock, either in store or online. You never have to worry if you're in a jam. They got your part. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free in or out of your car. It's nice not to have to yank that thing. If it needs to be replaced, they'll help you find the right battery for your vehicle. Need your windshield wipers replaced, brake light fixed, or quick service? They'll help you find the right parts or point you in the nearest local uh, repair shop so uh, you can have the pros do it. Whether you're a car aficionado or an auto novice, you'll find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are knowledgeable, helpful, and all friendly. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are your one-stop shop for all things auto. Do it yourself. And you can find out what you need in store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today. Or you can give them a visit, O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, brother, I think you hit the fucking nail on the head right there. Let's bring these Israelis to Baja, California. We love them and we want them. Let's bring them here, buddy. I think you're on to something. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Jay Moore is in the studio. Look at you, solving world issues. Joe Prano. Yeah, it was a whole chapter in one of my books. It's old. I, I've, said, I've said it for 25, almost 30 years. Just fucking... For, Israel's not going to be able to do anything about their neighbors. You're, you're living on a cul-de-sac with yeah. crack addicts who fucking are trying to stab your dog. And you, you mistakenly think, oh, we just want to get along. They don't want to get along. They want you dead. They're fucking nuts. It's never going to work. And the example is like people like, remember you used to have roommates? Well, you were rich at 20. But I, I always had roommates and roommates, roommates you know. And you'd get these, sometimes you have these really fucked up shitty roommates. Like I had a roommate that took a hammer to all the dishes in the sink. Just literally took a hammer. Okay. To, I had fucked up roommates, you know? But what would happen is, like, you'd talk to people, and they go, I got a fucked up roommate. And then I'd go, you got to move out, because this guy's going to kill you in your Israel, sleep. And they Israel's go... Israel's got to move out? Yeah, they go, I put the cleaning... I put the deposit down, you know? It's my $489 that he, they should move out. And I go, they're not moving out. They're going to fucking kill you. Get the fuck out of there. And they're like, why should I move out? I put the... Because you're going to fucking wake up and this guy's going to be holding a machete over your head. That's why. It's never going to work. Move to Baja, California. Tons of desert. Tons of ocean. It's really the same. I did the math. It, the ambient temperature is like the same, like year round. <laughs> it's, it's desert meets the sea. Tons of space in Baja. And nobody could use Jews more than Mexico. They're literally short on bean counters, ironically. They need the and, Jews. And the Baja Strip has the exact same ring to it. Yes, right? and, and the Baja oh. Strip. They need the innovation. They need the technology. They need the you know, sensibility. You know, They need the Jewish point of view and energy. Mexico would be a thriving place if it just imported some Jews. And they, by the way, move out. The, the Muslims are going to all fucking behead each other. It's, it's, it's all going up in a, in a fire over there. So just go to Baja. And, so and they would be awesome neighbors, too. So is, let's hypothetically, Israel just pulls up in the middle of the night, like does a Baltimore Colts. Just That's right. Relocates That's to right. Baja, California. What do you think, Adam, specifically happens in the region if Israel just is no longer, there is not a single Jew Maybe like three or four floating around, but just now it's just real estate, and yes. you got you know you got Egypt, you got Syria, you got Lebanon. Like what do you what do you think would happen to that region? They have to find a new group to kill, so they'd have to sort of take a vote on like what tribe or who they want to kill now, because they need a new group to kill, and they might send a few people over to Tijuana or Baja or Rosarita or something just to try to mop up some Jews, and they might focus their <laughs> ire. On, well, they hate you. They want to kill mop Jews. Up. Just mop up some straggler Jews. 
they come to they probably come to you know United Maybe States and try to kill the a little bit. You know, the, you know we can't go yeah. to Mexico. It's dangerous. There. Who's doing all the accounting for the cartels? <laughs> so uh, yeah, I but eventually they'll start just killing each other, killing whoever's least like whoever the dominant tribe is. So that's okay. what they do. So so just moving on, moving on to Israel. But Israel moving on to Baja. I, I mean, I checked the square footage, the mm. acreage. It's about the it's, same. No, it's bigger, It's right? bigger. You got a lot more room in Baja in the same temp, same environment, same thing. You just, you'd set up there. They'd, have, they'd fucking dominate. It'd be the best thing that ever happened to Mexico. You don't think San Diego would be like, Jesus, look, we got these oh, fucking yeah. Jewish neighbors now. Jewish guys mowing my lawn. <laughs> Jewish guys doing center block work in my backyard. Human, human wicks. The wall has to be a lot smaller to keep out the Jews. Where'd you get that dreidel? I bought it from this Jew on the side of the freeway. He was selling dreidels oh, on the side of God the freeway. Bless him. Yeah. I still love mm-hmm. your bit about Hasidic Jews or human wicks. How come, how come more Hasidic Jews don't catch fire? <laughs> I've never just, done it on stage. But it's just, like, <laughs> everything about them, just like it's just all dangling. They're all fucking beard and sleeve, and they're kindling fucking sandals every night. You know? Yeah, everything's just dangling over flames constantly. The, the payoffs, yeah. you know, everything. Yeah, yeah. They're a giant wick. Yeah, you're right. No, it's your joke. Oh, it's I'm my remi- joke. I'm reminding yeah. you of your you bit. Remind me of my bit. He's like, that's, that's genius. That's you genius, thought of it. that bit. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Is there another story? There is. We have... Uh, the Menendez brothers yeah. Yeah, await a decision they hope will free them. Uh, yeah. they, they've never denied killing their parents, but uh, the reason was always they said they were sexually abused. And uh, there's new evidence that corroborates the longstanding claims and lessens their culpability. Uh, Lyle and Eric should have been convicted of manslaughter instead of first-degree murder. Uh, and if they had been, they'd be... They'd have received a much shorter sentence and been out of prison a long time ago, and it looks like it's a new. They evidence. look, they look great. Oh yeah, have you ever seen the? Have you you guys know about the Mark Jackson basketball yeah. card with them in the background? Yeah, That's yeah, one yeah. of the most amazing yeah. things ever. There's a new evidence that includes a letter that Gardner says was written by Eric to Eric's cousin uh, in December 1988, about eight months before the crime. The letter reads in part, "I've been trying to avoid Dad. It's still happening." But it's worse for me now. But I, every teenager sends one of those letters <laughs> off. I sent my dad's butt fucking me letter off to my cousin Greg. He wasn't fucking me at the time, but how I was ben like, Stiller in case the shit goes down, I want to be covered. How was you know? Ben Stiller and I played Lyle? Look at this. Yeah. Um, all right. So, how long have they been in for 30? Yeah. 20? Yeah. How long? Yeah, it's a, a early 90s. Uh, they should yeah. be out. They should be out. As yeah. someone, I think the only guy at this table that's actually gone repeatedly to speak to guys that are in prison without parole Uh uh-huh it's i love that you just assume that about me that's not what i'm doing Mm -hmm. (laughs) my takeaway every time i leave is it's it just it changes if you ever go into prison and meet somebody that's been there since like 90 or 88 or 98 it just is so inconceivable that this person's been here for this long because when you meet them they're not like a guy like stabbing your father or stabbing like somebody or beating an old lady to death or whatever. They're just guys just making just, yeah, I made a horrible, I, I, I'm not eloquent in this, but it's just like, no, we went, send them home. We did a man show bit where we went to prison and they put us in uh, the good, the well-behaved group. You know, if you want your freedom you know, relatively, you can be in this group, but you yeah. can't fuck with other prisoners or yeah. we'll pull you out of this group. So, it's a sort of get along group. And there was a guy, I'll never forget this guy. He he played the guitar. Um, he he wore glasses. He looked like Miranda's pussy whipped husband from Sex and the City. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like that guy. It was just like a nice looking, kind of unassuming white guy, you know? And I, I was like, <laughs> so first things first, he's just he's like 35, you know, he's playing the shit out of this guitar. And I go, uh, well, that's nice. They let you bring your guitar in or pick up with the guitar you know, where you left off or whatever. And he goes, oh, I didn't know how to play the guitar when I got here. And I was like, oh, but you're so good on the guitar. He's, yeah, I've been here for 15 years. Yeah. Like I, I started playing when I got here or learning. Now I'm good. He's just a sweet, like unassuming guy. Had these like round John Lennon spectacles, you know. And I and I just said, so that's stupid of me. But I go, when are you, when are you getting out? And he goes, never. Yeah. And I was like, but he's just, how long have you been here? He said, 19. And I was like, it was just, 
Oh yeah, it's, it really never, changes. You're never going anywhere. You're never leaving. Yeah. And so Garagos represents these guys now, and there was a little bit of a breakthrough because there was some DA or something. It it doesn't look good politically for you to pardon the Menendez boys when you're running for office, but someone ran for office, won the election, and now they can do whatever. And uh, they're going to get out. And when they get out, they're getting paid. Because, like, remember when Leno burnt half his face off? Yeah, yeah. And I ran into him in Malibu, and I said, uh, Jay, you should come on the podcast and talk about it. And he goes, okay. But first I got to talk to people, and then... I can come uh, on the podcast because they have an exclusive. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the exclusive for the Menendez story, that's not going to be two million bucks. That's going to be ten million bucks. You think so? Yeah. You think it's like still, there's, there's, there are people like. Do you think it's still a hot story for them to get out and they'll they'll start to gin it up. We'll yeah. start to hear about it. We'll get a little into it, and there's going to be some bidding going on, and there's going to be a real premium for their sit down like their first sit down and uh yeah as i always tell everybody i know the dad i know the parents were horrible because i have twins and if my daughter came into my son's room and was like hey, i'm thinking about killing mom and dad on sunday with a shotgun what do you think and my son went this sunday or the following sunday that meant we were fucking horrible parents that's that's mm-hmm. my only head on this this guy seemed like he was a horrible guy, and he did seem and, – and all the allegations of sexual abuse and everything were, like, inadmissible. But I think the real culprit – Doss, you're going to have to do some work here. You and Byron. It just popped in my head. The real reason the Menendez brothers got locked up for life and the real reason O.J. became a free man – is the defense attorney for the Menendez brothers had fucked up Jerry Curl hair and Marsha Clark had fucked up Jerry Curl hair when she was trying to put OJ away. Unfortunate And you can blame both of the, the either lack of conviction or the conviction on their representatives. Marsha Clark looked like Paul Paul Gasol. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And ostrich hair. Yeah. Oh, I could... (laughs) Man, I could go a real deep cut I'm for so you. I'm so pleased with myself. That's a, <laughs> that's good, that's a good cut. You, you want to go deeper? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. There's an actor who played in the movie Earthquake. <laughs> I got, I got Marco, out of Marjo Gortner. Marjo Gortner. Do you remember Marjo no, no, Gortner? No. So his name. He's a character oh, actor. A man. man worked a ton. Jay's on Marjo Gortner to lose weight. <laughs> yeah. Marjo no, was. Marjo Marjo Gortner was a was a busy character actor who played w- a weird gay marine in the movie <laughs> Earthquake and used to put on in the movie a weird fro blonde wig. Hmm. I right, find that. Okay, find those. Representatives, and then we'll we'll get back. Marjo Gortner without the wig looks like he could make Jay's oh boy hot man uh, <laughs> list. Look at she's going. Bah! All right, am I right? Yeah. Am I right? Their hair lost the case for both their clients. Yeah. One of the citizens of Bernie Sanders California. lost uh, the presidency because all he needed was a comb. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Uh, uh, one thing I'll tell you is I love to run my comb on the water and and comb my hair with it, but not this morning. On the most important day, when I'm talking to millions of people. Whose bird is that? <laughs> what is... I, I'm telling you. You're going to know Margot Gortner. Was it Margot? Marjo. Marjo. Marjo, Marjo Gortner. Gortner. That fucking perm on Marsha Clark. She, she, I mean, you got... That's like my sister's and mom, 1980. You come home, you, the whole fucking kitchen smells, yes, that perm yes, smell. Yes. Everyone's walking around with aluminum foil in her hair. Yes. And you're like, well, I've got to go outside. I'm going to pass out. <laughs> Yes. And she's like, no, nah, no, nah, I got something real special for the trial. Wait, And then, you know. She, I think their hair lost them the I'm cases. Not, I don't think you're wrong. I don't I'm know if you're wrong. right, but you're not You're not. Now, Mar- from the movie Earthquake. That's oh, that is need HIV plus. Mm. That he's, guy needs broth. Marjo's still alive. Was, was that him? 
was Marjo. His IMDb is. Was that oh, the guy man. that just flashed up there? Yeah, but he's got the. He, I needed the wig from the. Mo- I need him from the movie Earthquake. Not he looks like from- the snooty guy from Benson a little bit in that picture. <laughs> his what's his IMDb, Joe? Mar- is this? I think we got you here. Marjo Gortner Earthquake. Yes. yes, there he is. It's like he's- a Gatlin brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is riveting visuals. Yes, it's good. It's good, good pot. All right. Well, I mean, he's been in every movie. Right, so you're going to feel bad. Look at Marsha Clark right now, mm-hmm. and I want you just knee jerk response. Would you? Uh, That's I, too. You took too long. Oh, you're right. What was your knee jerk? I'd, I'd rather. I'd. I'd, I'd rather um, throw five on myself. <laughs> What about Mason Reese on the left? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. What about Pete Rose over there? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what about the hit Pete king? Rose the Listen. <laughs> what about the hit king You're on the left? showing a picture of... of your, all right, hold on. The Menendez brothers, what the fuck is her name, by the way? We can't just keep going, what's her name? What's her name? Leslie Abramson, I think. Abramson, I think. Leslie Abramson. She looks like right, Pete You Rose need a picture from the tribe. Remember not, Pete Rose had his is, elbow up on the dugout? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. Pete Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Pete shot. <laughs> you need it from the trial, not from 2011 or whatever. This is this is an old. This is oh. not an old picture. You need so one it just, from the everything's trial. Everything's so humid. Like what? <laughs> what they just lived in a fucking sauna. Right. But you you stand with me. There are a lot of women in the jurors box. They don't respond well to a natural. They don't like a woman's hair. They don't trust. Oh. They, there. Thank oh, you. Wow. Thank you. Actually, I didn't think they looked that bad. Well, now what? Now, Ace, I'm going to ask you the question. When you see that photo, when you <laughs> <laughs> would you <laughs> would right. you you would yeah I mean she she kind of looks like Carol King or something that's like <laughs> Julia Louise Dreyfus's hair in early Seinfeld which is that I, it's sister bad. that it, sister it's, it's Marjo Gortner from Earthquake I'm <laughs> I'm saying they're both their crazy hairs loss. They needed some relaxer and a hot comb. She they could have won age this thing. Well, does she live on the sun? Like that's they, they could have won these cases if they got their hair normal. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Or just so, redo the jury pool. All right. You know, it's interesting. She also represented Phil Spector. I oh, wonder wow. if they had, oh, wow. I wonder if they had a hair Inspired off. Inspired wow. by yeah. So do they take the wigs when you go to prison? Do they take the wigs? They have to take your yeah, wig away because yeah, yeah. all his pictures from prison are him totally bald. And so what, who was the guy in Trump's circle that like showed up one day to court in a wheelchair? Um, he oh. kind of looks like a captain at a steakhouse. Mm. Oh, uh, Roger Stone? No, did he show up? Yeah, I don't want to play the guessing game. My bad. All right, <laughs> all let's right. move it along. All right, where's Marjo Gortner? Jesus, this guy from Earthquake. I hate this guy. <laughs> nope. Oh yeah, bad wig, but right, not early enough. Yeah, Jared Leto. All right, Didn't this guy's know. been in every movie, Jay. You're gonna need him for a reference one day. And he's a staff sergeant. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> With samurai knives. You ever With see the movie Earthquake? The no, I will. Oh, know. you got to see it. It's it's Erwin Allen. Speaking of movies, Ace, hmm. I did this movie called Sweet Dreams with Johnny Knoxville playing a guy that goes oh, to rehab. Yeah. All right, what's next? More news? <laughs> I got to hit it. I don't want to hear it from the publicists. Uh, oh, well, yeah. we, we were talking to OJ. Uh, OJ Simpson's family declines to have his brain tested for CTE. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, wh- wh- do the, does I, anybody on that side of the fence do anything good for anyone yeah. other than OJ? No, but also, I'm not going to pay you for your murdered kids, and you're not going to see if this guy had brain, you know, trauma from playing football. If he, if if that trial happened today, don't you think that'd be immediately what they went to? He had CTE. Oh yeah, he had CTE. Yes. Yeah, I killed him, but you know, I got you know, I ran into Junior Seo a few hundred times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm, also because I'm you, a time traveler. Sorry, you, <laughs> you <laughs> see, I realized um, a young Junior Seo in my last days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I ran into Manti Teo's girlfriend. <laughs> When you see his early playing days with USC and they're like talking to him on practice and stuff, he's got a helmet with just some foam rubber pads yeah. inside of it, like almost a suspension well, helmet. Nobody like really then. got a running start on the guy, let's be honest. Like, he, it's not like people were like teeing off on the juice. He was, he was phenomenal. He was, but you forget, like, there's a clip of him being tackled by, like, Van Egan or, or one of those, sorry, one of those Raiders linebacker guys when they do the crazy head hunt, you know, <laughs> forearm thing. Just right. literally just head hunt him, pull his helmet off, and, like, throw him on the ground. Like, back when you could do that, 
they they did a lot of like crazy forearm shiver, you know, coming over the middle. Didn't, line. didn't even throw the pass to the guy. Just Lynn Swan, you know, flying Jack Tatum, you know, elbows. In Hollywood, I don't know why this just popped into my head. In Hollywood Henderson's book, which is fantastic. Yeah, uh, they're playing the Saints, and Mike Ditka is the special teams coach for the Cowboys at the time. And at the time, the Saints had that kicker with <laughs> half a foot, Dempsey. Oh right, yeah, he has like half a foot, and. uh and uh, Ditka goes, hey, I'm so sick and tired they're watching film. He goes, I'm so sick and tired of this guy, this stupid kicker, sticking his nose in the pile like he's a football player. Henderson, opening kickoff when they kick to us, you just ear hole this cocksucker, and you make sure he's fucking rattled. I'm tired of him pretending he's... So Henderson, like, the kickoff starts coming, and just he's a giant man, and just runs right at Je- Dempsey and just tattoos him and just, like, k- almost murders him, right? And what he says in the book, he goes, everybody knows he had half a foot, but nobody knows he had half an arm also. He had half an arm. But nobody knows about that. He goes, the only time I ever felt bad in my football life was that little guy laying on the turf, waving that little arm at me, going, you're a real man, Henderson, waving those little peas yeah. for fingers. He had a very deformed arm. I never too. noticed. I just had, had the half record a foot. for longest field goal for was like it fair? He had a square 30 foot. years. Um, you could have put a fucking horseshoe in there. Hollywood, <laughs> I, he did. He had a special boot. Yeah, it was like a big I club I fucking foot. hate kickers. Hollywood so Henderson much so that I'm swearing. won the lottery twice. Yeah. That's insane. Like big. Also, wow. One the, night before, the night before the Super Bowl, he's uh, smoking crack with hookers, and there's a knock on his door, and he opens the door, and it's... Uh, Ed Two Tall Jones. No, it was um, <laughs> Marvin Gaye, who was doing the national anthem the next day, and he goes, I heard you got rocks and bitches. Oh, and wow. And he's like, I do, and they just fucking both rolled to work. The next you know, Marvin Gaye Mar- shows up at his... He won the lottery three times. Marvin you know Marvin Gaye's last words? He was shot by his dad. What's going on? <laughs> I love that joke. All right. <laughs> Have I never heard it? I made it up. Did you really? Yeah. That a boy, Ace. Shot by his dad. It was What's a cross dresser. <laughs> well, that has to be your last words before hey, what's your going dad. On? Yeah, a little different inclination. All right, <laughs> let's bring it home. Jay, Sweet Dreams is the name of the Hell movie yeah. with Jay Moore. Also, Bertram's going to do some oh, yeah. great... You can go watch yourself in the next room. We're going to show you a couple Bertram clips over there. Uh, it's out on digital April 16th. And then uh, Joe Prano. Dirty Sports is the name of the pod. It's available wherever you listen to finer podcasts That's right. as well. And he's got dates You look Canadian. You look like well. you're on SCTV in that oh, photo. Thank you. Yeah, I'll um, be at uh, New York Comedy Club Stanford April 25th. If anybody it, is in Connecticut. Very funny stand up. I just watched him Thank do you, two 20 minute sets. Joe Prano is where you go.com for all the dates. Uh, I'm going to be in Salt Lake City, and I think Joe may be opening there too in uh, Utah May 2nd, or sorry, May 3rd and 4th. And just go to amcrow.com for all my live shows. Until next time, Adam Crow for Joe Prano and Jay Moore. Say it. Mahalo. <laughs> <laughs>